Tonight, the soon-to-be-crowned American League Western Division champion White Sox take on the California Angels, and they wrap up a homestand trying to sweep seven straight. Hi, everybody. This is Ken Wilson along with Joe McConnell. The weather is ideal, certainly a bit cooler than in recent days, but just perfect for this one before a sellout crowd at Comiskey Park as the White Sox try to reduce their magic number to four. Kansas City picked up a win this afternoon. The White Sox will try to win it tonight behind Lamar Hoyt, the veteran right-hander going after his 20th win of the year. And Ken Forge, 11-9, will be on the mound for the Angels, who have had a miserable road trip going 1-5. and five. Reggie Jackson has not appeared in this series, but he's in the starting lineup tonight. He'll be hitting cleanup for the Angels. So three victories already over California for the Sox. 8-5, to 11 to nothing, and then the brilliant 12-inning win in last night's game that ended early this morning, 7-6. to six. Well, we're going to take a look at the starting lineups, but first, let's pause for station identification. This is the Chicago White Sox Radio Network. Keep it right here for complete coverage of all the baseball races tomorrow morning here on 67 WMAQ Chicago. Stay with the Sox and stay with WMAQ. The White Sox, down to their final 20 games of the regular season, will face this angel lineup. Gary Pettis, the youngster, leading it off. He'll be in center field. Rod Carew will bat second. He'll play first. Carew coming in with a 349 average. Another youngster will bat third, Mike Brown. Brown will be in left. Then Reggie Jackson in right field, hitting fourth for California. Reggie below 200. He has had only one hit in his last 42 at-bats. Jerry Naren, the ex-Yankee and Mariner, will bat fifth. He's the DH. The catcher for the Angels is Bob Boone. Rob Wilfong, the number seven hitter and second baseman. Hitting eighth and playing shortstop, rookie Dick Schofield. And Steve Labranich will bat ninth for John McNamara's club. Labranich will be at third base. And the starting pitcher, right-hander Ken Forge. This crowd, enthusiastic as always, and they're responding to the appearance of the White Sox heading to their defensive positions. For the Sox, batting first in center field, Rudy Law. And the catcher, Carlton Fisk. The right fielder and third hitter is Harold Baines. Batting fourth, Greg Luzinski, the Sox designated hitter. Greg Walker will bat fifth. He'll be at first base. Walker will be followed by left fielder Ron Kittle. Vance Law is at third, batting seventh. At second base tonight, the eighth hitter in the order, Scott Fletcher, and the shortstop, Jerry Dubzinski, batting ninth. And the pitcher is Lamar Hoy. We'll be set to play ball here at Comiskey Park in just a moment. USA Today introduces sport in an entirely different way. Today Sports, America's most comprehensive sports section. Every day, complete pro coverage, all the results from everywhere, plus state by state, the college, high school, and amateur sports. USA Today, sports, money, life, and the nation. Pick up USA Today, 25 cents a newsstand. USA If you're about to buy a small business computer, you may find the hardest part is doing the computing. Because besides the basic computer... $2,995. You'll need a monitor. $395. A printer. $595. Along with various cables and cards to make it all work together. But now, Apple's done the computing for you and put everything you need in two specially priced packages. For small businesses, there's the Apple IIe system with two disk drives, Apple monitor, and Apple dot matrix printer. For larger businesses, there's the Apple III system with profile hard disk, Apple monitor, and Catalyst software. To find out more about the Apple small business package, just stop by or call. You need ring only once. You'll find Apple computers at Computerland in Joliet, Computerland Junction in Elmhurst, and Computerland in Arlington Heights. Five minutes after 6 o'clock, the O'Hare temperature reading 73 degrees at the lakefront 70 at WMAQ. 
Just about ready to go. Rocky Rowe is the plate umpire. Dale Ford at first. Ken Kaiser at second. And Larry Barnett around at third. The incredible White Sox trying for their 13th straight win here at home. The crowd is ready. Lamar Hoyt looking to notch number 20 in the win column. The night is set on the mound and ready to tell you about the early going. Here's Joe McConnell. Thank you very much. Lamar Hoyt. 28-year-old right-hander, all set to face Gary Pettis, Rod Carew, and Mike Brown in that order. The big right-hander into the lineup. Here's the first pitch, a fastball high and away, and we're underway. Pettis 0 for 12 in the series. 0 for 12 since he was called up from Edmonton, where he hit 285, 11 homers, 52 runs battered in. He's a switch hitter, batting left-handed against Hoyt. Hoyt delivers, fastball, bounce to Fletcher at second, Scott up with it, throw to first, and there's one gone. Defensively, the White Sox have Kittle, Law, and Baines from left to right in the outfield. Vance Law at third, Dubinsky at shortstop tonight, and Fletcher moves over to second to give Julio the night off. Greg Walker at first, and Fisk behind the plate. Here's Rod Carew, seven-time American League batting champion, trailing only Wade Boggs in the batting title race this year. He needs a late rally to catch Boggs, who has a 364 mark. Carew is hitting 349, a couple of home runs. 41 runs batted in, two for eight in the series. Carew left handed batter. Hoyt delivers, and a slow curve is in there for a call strike. Down and in, right into the belt. The Appleton Foxes clinched the Midwestern Division championship, the Midwestern League championship today, so the White Sox have two minor league champions, the American Association Kings, the Denver Bears, and now in the Class A level, the Appleton Foxes and they're going to move a handful of players up to replace the players on the Denver roster as they go to the Little World Series swing at a foul tip and it jumps up and it catches a piece of Rocky Rowe, the home plate umpire one and two to count to Rod Carew Gary Buster Keaton, an infielder, John Taylor a catcher, Al Jones, who was up briefly with the White Sox, the right-handed reliever. Mike Trujillo, a right-handed starter. Pat Adams, first baseman, and Ed Miles, an outfielder, will all move up to play with the Denver Bears at AAA level in their Little World Series competition. Slow curve, swung on and fouled down and back. Peru just got a piece of that ball as Hoyt really snapped off a dandy down and in. Joining the White Sox today, veteran right-handed pitchers Randy Marks and Steve Mira, both up from Denver. Chris Nyman, who was up here earlier in the year. Tim Hewlett, excellent young second base prospect. Catcher Joel Skinner and outfielder Casey Park. Strike three call. Carew is called out. And for Lamar Hoyt, who has the best strikeout walk ratio in the major leagues, that's strikeout number 133. He has walked just 26 batters now in 223 innings. Two gone. Here's Mike Brown. 2-10 with the California Angels. 13 hits and 62 at-bats in 17 games for him. He's hit a couple of home runs. Seven RBIs. He hit 354 with 22 home runs and 106 runs batted in and just 119 games at Edmonton this year before he was called up a couple of weeks ago. He swings and laces one to center field. Rudy Law coming in. A diving one-handed falling catch for Rudy Law. He just took a hit away from Mike Brown. Another scintillating play by one of baseball's greatest defensive center fielders. No runs, no hits, nobody left. The first half inning of play is gone here at Comiskey Park. The Angels nothing, the White Sox coming to bat. My neighbor Sam is impressed by titles. When he found out Miss New Jersey drives the Honda Accord four-door sedan, famous mine, he couldn't wait to tell me. But I wasn't surprised. After all, I said, Miss New Jersey and the Honda Accord have a lot in common. They're both beautiful and highly regarded by the competition. Yes, but Miss New Jersey, right? A reigning beauty queen with the same car as you. So what? I said, a lot of beautiful people drive Honda Accords. It's the best-selling front-wheel drive four-door sedan in Alabama, Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Oregon, Virginia, and Washington. No New Jersey, I said. Nope. The most refreshing way to make the most of every 
batting order change that John McNamara didn't bother to inform anybody about. Ron Jackson apparently is in the lineup and is in left field defensively and Adams or rather uh, Brown will be in right field. So apparently uh, Reggie Jackson has been taken out of the lineup. Last minute scratch apparently for number 44. So we'll just assume that Ron Jackson is going to bat in Reggie's spot, which would be the number four position, and that would make it about as good as you could expect after you've already prepared to start a ball game. Well, you always could have a switch where maybe Reggie said he didn't want to play defense and might be the DH, and that might move Naren out of there. So that's another possibility, not as likely as yeah. the one you've suggested. We'll just have to see. All right, defensively, the Angels have Ron Jackson in left, Tennis in center and Brown in right. At third base is Labradich. We've seen him at second earlier. Shortstop, the youngster, Dickie Schofield. At second base, Rob Wilfong, Carew at first, and Boone behind the plate. Rudy Law steps in, hitting 286. Three homers, 29 RBIs, and four misses high, ball one. Rudy, two for 14 in the series, has not hit well against the Angels this year. He has only six hits and 37 at-bats against California pitching. Four swings into the windup. Here's the pitch, and the slider is down and in a ball, ball two. They play Rudy straight away. A lot of clubs will shade him to the opposite field and play him a lot shallower in the outfield than the Angels are. Porsche has been tough on the White Sox. Two victories in a five-day span. Two of the three earned by the Angels this year. There's a fastball strike knee-high outside corner. He pitched a three-hit shutout victory here a year ago, June, at Comiskey Park. With three and one lifetime. He was a reliever at 19 saves and a brilliant lower under an average against uh, with the Houston Astros earlier in his career. There's ball three. It's high. He had a 2.15 ERA. Four wins, three losses, and 19 saves coming out of the bullpen for Houston in 76. He was acquired when the Angels sent Dickie Fond to Houston. Outside the ball and Rudy Law is aboard. Rudy, who is ninth in run scored with 86 despite the fact he's platooned a lot this year, gets a leadoff walk in the Number two base dealer with 67 out of 78 will be on now with nobody out. There's that wildness, uncharacteristic of Ken Force that Kenny Wilson mentioned when he was talking about Force's recent outings. So Rudy Award, a leadoff walk, and here's Carlton Fisk. 290 on the year, 25 home runs, 78 RBIs. He's third in the league in slugging percentage. He has the longest hitting streak of any Sox player this year, 14. He's at 375 with five homers, 12 runs battered in in that 14-game span. And in the second half, since the All-Star break, Fudge is batting at 330 and a 335 mark since he was put into the number two spot in the batting order in late June. They play him deep and around to the left. The stretch by four, here's the pitch, and this takes a strike call. Fudge three for 12 in the series. He has a lifetime 306 batting mark against the Angels with 11 career home runs. He has homered in this series. He's one shy of his personal single year high of 26 home runs. He did it twice in Boston. Throw to second. Late Rudy Law in with his 68th stolen base of the year. He got a great jump. Fist took the pitch low for a ball. And the throw to second was late, and Rudy's in there with stolen base number 68. Bob Boone goes out to have a word with Force. Now they've got on the board, strike two. Now the umpire is changing at Rocky Row. I'm sure he called that pitch a ball, and apparently he did. It was low, or appeared to be low. So Law, during the lead run at second, nobody out. And a one-and-one -one count to Carlton Fisk. Ken Force, older brother of Bob Force, still pitching for the Cardinals. They're natives of Sacramento. Ken now makes his home in Anaheim, the home of the Angels. 
The right-hander to the belt, checks Rudy at second. Here's a pitch to fifth, swung on and fouled back to the wire behind the plate. And the count is one ball, two strikes. Tigers beat the Brewers today. They took three out of four in that big weekend series up at County Stadium. And Baltimore took three out of four at New York. So the Orioles lead the Tigers by five and a half. Yankees are seven back, and the Brewers now all but out of it at seven and a half back. This settles back in. Now the stretch by force, the look at second. Here's the pitch to Carlton. Swung on and lying foul. Just missing third base coach Jimmy Leland. Davey Nelson coaching at first. Dodgers and the Braves out in Los Angeles, of course, uh, an Atlanta victory would close that margin to just one game in the National League East. Montreal, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis all a half game apart in the top four spots in the National League East when play started today. The stretch, here's the pitch, and fifth swings and hits one foul down the right field side. It's drifting back out of play, off at the side of the upper deck. So the count holds. Lot second, nobody out. Bottom of the first inning, no score. The Sox shooting for a four-game sweep over the Angels. As Kenny mentioned, they've won 12 straight here at home, 11 straight over the West. They are now 39-19 and 19 against their own division. Stretched by four shears of pitch to Fisk. Swung on, little handle pop out of play. Land on the roof on the third base side. He got jammed that time and just popped it back. Just the one change. It's Ron Jackson instead of Reggie Jackson batting cleanup. And they switch the outfielders. Here's the pitch. Fred swings and hits another high twisting foul down the right field side into the first row of the upper deck. So he's spoiling some good pitches here. Well, I'm disappointed. Kind of hoping we get to see Reggie swing the bat here. But he was a last-second stretch, and Papa Jack is in the lineup instead. Again, Force working out of the stretch. 0-2 pitch to this. Swung on, deep drive, left center field. Way, way back. And on the warning track, a running catch by Gary Pettis, tagging at second and scooting to third is Rudy Law. Oh, Pudge got a hold of it and ripped it deep to left center in that deepest part of the gap out there at the 401 sign. And Pettis made a fine running catch in deep left center field. Boy, Fisk coming in with a 290 average. He had to pull that even just 20 feet to the left. It would have been out easily. At least now the Sox with a runner at third and a chance with another fly ball doesn't even have to be that deep to get a run on the board. And Baines did a fly ball homer to win it with two out in the bottom of the 12th last night. Stepping in now with a runner at third and one out. First pitch and the curve low inside the ball. Baines has a seven-game hitting streak in 12 out of the last 13. He's hitting at 438 over the last seven games. He is seven for 14 in this series with two doubles, two homers, and five runs batted in. He takes low ball. On the year, Harold leads the club with 148 hits, a 280 average with 15 home runs and 80 runs batted in. Ball, lanky left-handed batter, slightly closed stance. They play him just a shade around to the right and deep. Stretched by the right-hander force. Swing and a miss as he came inside, built high with a slider, and the count is two balls and a strike. So Reggie Jackson, who had struck out 130 times in 379 official at-bats and struggling with a 198 average, pulled out of the starting lineup here. There's a swing and a foul down and back. Two and two the count to Bain. Rudy Law with a leadoff walk is stolen base. Advanced to third on the deep fly ball. The left center off the bat of Fisk. He's over there now with a two and two count to Baines. No score. Bottom of the first inning. Porsche using the stretch. Here's the pitch to Baines. Check swing and it just missed. A bit outside. Ball three. Then Force has the sign. Here's the pitch. Baines bounces one up the middle. That'll score the run. Backhanded play near the bag at second. 
And over to first, Wilfong throws out Baines, but the run scores. Rudy's 87th tally of the year, and RBI number 81 for Baines, and the White Sox have a 1-0 lead with two outs in the bottom of the first inning. Boy, tough spot on defense. You get in a spot early in the game where you have to get the out, have to allow the run to come in unless you get a one-hop shot hit right at you on the infield, and the Sox take advantage. They have a run without a hit. Here's Lezinski. Slider outside, ball one. Greg, a four-game hitting streak, and he's hit a home run in three of them. He's hitting 249 with 29 home runs, 84 RBIs. His 29 homers rank him fourth in the league. Blown away. Force just misses the outside edge about knee-high with a slider, and it's ball two. Outfield deep and around to the left, so the infield. The 2 0 pitch to Lezinski swung on a check swing high one hopper. Back to Force, who stretches up to Glover, throws him out. And the Sox are gone in the first, but they take the lead with a run. No hits, a walk, a stolen base, and a ground ball to bring in the runner. And at the end of one, the Sox won, the Angels nothing. Central Tire keeps you on the road. Central Tire has brand names you know. For a great grip and a fit that sound, at Central Tire we're always around. At Central Tire in Chicago and Cicero, get the best steel belted radial tire BF Goodrich makes at its lowest price ever. The XLMHT is the all-season tire that provides excellent traction in both winter and summer on wet or dry roads. A polyester cord body and two-fold steel belts give you a smooth, quiet ride and long-lasting performance. The XLMHT radial delivers outstanding handling and fuel savings. Get the BF Goodrich XLMHT radial tire now through September 30th at its lowest price ever. Get it at all five Central Tire locations and see how BFG's best just got better. Central Tire with five BF Goodrich locations, including Roosevelt, near Austin, and Cicero, and 728 South Clinton in downtown Chicago. The White Sox, WMAQ. Cleopatra become Queen of the Nile. Baby, I did it for the money. Why did Sherlock Holmes solve crime? I must confess, I did it for the money. Why did the bride of Frankenstein marry Frankenstein? I did it for love. And for the money. You could win a million dollars or up to a hundred thousand dollars instantly in the Illinois State Lottery's Fortune Instant Game. So play it for the same reason Napoleon became emperor. Likash! <laughs> One to nothing, the White Sox over the California Angels and Ron Jackson, the last minute replacement in the lineup for Reggie Jackson, will lead it off. Jackson hitting 249, seven home runs, 35 RBIs. He homered off Bannister to score the first run of the ball game last night. High leg kick in the delivery, and Hoyt misses low and away with a slider, and the count is ball one. Jackson won for 10 in the series, had home run off Bannister, but on the year he's had 11 hits and 26 at-bats, a pair of homers, and eight runs batted in against the White Sox, including three doubles. Fastball strike for the outside corner. In fact, he's been the most productive California hitter against the Sox all year. There's a swing and a little chopper foul off to the left. The count is one and two. By the way, our big payoff hitting contest tonight, the home half of the sixth. Home half of the sixth inning. We'll try to give away some money or possible television set. But a very popular big payoff hitting contest. Point just misses inside of the knees with a blistering fastball. He choked up on it a bit, ran it in against the right-handed hitter. Two balls, two strikes. They play Jackson straight away. Hoyt delivers. Curve, and it's just a bit close. Jackson was bailing out, and that pitch snapped down over the uh, inside edge, but it broke a little late. Full count of three and two. Hoyt ready. The big right-hander into the windup. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on. Line drive right field. Baines coming over and in. Makes the catch knee high, and there's one gone. So Brown robbed of a hit by Rudy Law in center field with two out in the first and Jackson lines hard to right leading off the second two well hit balls both for put outs here's Jerry Naren all for one in the series since he was called up from Edmonton he hit 301 with 27 home runs and 101 RBIs veteran left-handed hitter a catcher by trade 
Chops one to the shortstop, Dzitsky, and it over, takes it on the second bounce, throws to Walker at first, and Naren is gone, going after the first pitch. Well, today is first Chicago Corporation First Family Day. I'd like to welcome over 15,000 family members of the First National Bank of Chicago, helping the White Sox to sell out this rare Sunday night twilight game. Two gone. Here's veteran catcher Bob Boone. Bobby hitting 258, seven home runs, 47 RBIs. Right-handed batter, upright stint, and he lines one to right field of base hit. Baines can't get to it. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. It got by Rudy. And there goes Boone around second, and he's going to put on the brakes. He probably would have had enough leg strength to get to third, but he wasn't going to risk it with two out. So Boone comes up with his 18th double of the year, a gapper to right center, and that's the first Angel base runner with two gone here in the second. White got that slider right over the heart of the plate about knee high. That is only the second hit in 22 at-bats for Boone this year against the Sox, both of them in this series. Tying run at second, two out, and here's Rob Wilfong. Left-handed hitting infielder, playing at second base. Bobby Gritch on the disabled list for the rest of the year. Rob hitting 260, one homer, 12 RBIs. Bouncer up the middle, back in, oh, off the glove of Fletcher, and here comes the tying run in. Fletcher reached down, tried to backhand that ball near the bag at second, it tipped his glove and then got behind him, and that enabled Boone to come on in from third. And the Angels are on the board, and Will Fong will probably be given credit for a hit and his 13th RBI of the year. even a run apiece, two out here in the second. They give Will Fong the hit. It was a tough chance for Fletcher. Will Fong has put some 55 or 6 points on his batting average since the 3rd of August. Here's Dick Schofield, the youngster who had his first major league home run off Barojas last night, came in the ninth inning. At the time, didn't figure to mean much. Turned out when the White Sox scored five runs, that was the run that sent it into extra innings. Schofield, two hits and nine at-bats in this series. A curve in there at the knees for a call strike. He hit 284 at Edmonton with 16 home runs and 94 RBIs. He might be the top kid now in the Angel organization. He had a brilliant night defensively last night after struggling the night before. The pitch to him, runner going, swung on, line drive, right field, hit deep, Baines going back, and a reaching one-handed lunging catch. I didn't think Baines had a prayer to get that ball, and he stretched up as high as he could go and caught it in the webbing as it sailed over his head, and that retires the side and prevents the Angels from taking the lead. One run, two hits, one left. Midway through the second, we're all tied. The Sox won, California won. Esquivus Eve Fede Reservations. If you've ever tried to help your kids memorize two years of French in one evening, or stayed up all night trying to figure out the new math. Now, let's see. The complement of the complement is the original set. You'll appreciate the value of the Apple IIe personal computer. It has over a thousand tutorial programs to help your kids learn everything from math to languages, prepare for college board exams, and even get ahead in life since apples are used by more people than any other personal computer. And now, to help you send your kids back to school, we're featuring specially priced Apple educational packages. You might consider it the newest form of student aid. Dad, what was the Cartesian product of the two sets? Or should we say, parent aid. You'll find Apple computers at Farnsworth Computer Center, Villa Park Store, Northbrook Computers in Northbrook, and Primus Equipment Incorporated in Joliet. Baseball with Pearsall, weekday mornings on WMAQ. The Sox are on the move, and eyewitness deals will be with them every hit, run, and step of the way. See more of the Sox on 7. Special flashbacks, Sox stats, and exclusive player interviews. Home or away, catch the action and reactions as Eyewitness News goes live to the ballpark for special coverage and highlights. Tune in today and see more of the Sox on Channel 7. Special Angel Series reports tonight at 10. 6.30 is the time. This is WMAQ Chicago. Along with Kenny Wilson, this is Joe McConnell. Glad you could be with us tonight. Boy, a beautiful night. Temperature 70 degrees. 
barely a cloud in the sky here in Chicago at game time, and we move down to the home half of the second inning. Sox and the Angels tied to run a piece. Greg Walker, a five-game hitting streak, will lead it off. He'll be followed by Kittle and Vance Law. Greg hitting 271, eight homers, 49 RBIs, and he takes a swing and a miss at a breaking ball down and away. That was the fourth ball. Walker, two hits and three at-bats in this series, both pinch hits, and he's now hitting. 393 as a pinch hitter. And he leads the league with 13 RBIs as a pinch hitter. Swings, hits one to left field, drifting near the left field foul line. Long run for Ron Jackson. He can't get it. It short hops off the warning track into that low box seat railing down there. Foul territory. And Jackson, a very nice young man, just picked up the ball, flipped it into the lower seats and got a nice round of applause from the White Sox partisans down in the lower deck in the left field corner. On to the count. Walker leading it off. Youngster from Douglas, Georgia, just 23 years of age. What a great future he has in store for him. Borsch has the sign, the right-hander deals. Swung on, pop foul right off the fist, back out of play. Just missing the upper deck behind home plate. Still 0-2 to Walker. Sox got a run in the first inning without benefit of a hit. Force delivers the 0-2 pitch, and he went more than halfway and strikes out of there. Strikeout number one for Force, and his 70th of the year. He's completed nine of his 28 previous starts with one shutout this year, and it came at Milwaukee. Six hit the Brewers. Back on the 2nd of June, they've been shut out only three times this year and four times in the last two years, the Brew Crew. Derringer shut him out last night for the Tigers. Here's Ron Kittle in an 11-game hitting streak, his longest. 359 over that span with a half a dozen homers, 14 RBIs. He's hit safely in 15 of the last 16. Swing and a miss. Hit sick, you're down around the knees. The kid from Gary, Indiana, hitting 260, second in the league in home runs with 32, trailing Jim Rice of the Red Sox by three, and he's eighth in RBIs, leading the Sox with 89. They play him deep and around to the left. Widespread straightaway stance. Blowing away, a ball and a strike. Kittle has four hits in 13 at-bats, driven in four runs, including a game-winner in this series. Blowing away again, force misses outside, ball two. Two and one to Ron Kittle. Force rocks into the line, appears the pitch, swung on, popped up. Left side, who wants it? Fair territory, and it's going to be Schofield, the shortstop, who takes it on the dirt portion of the infield. Two gone. Kittle was hitting 333 with nine hits and 27 at bats, including a home run against the Angels prior to that at bat. Now with two out, here's Vance Law. He's got an eight gamer going. His average is 239 on the year. Four homers, 38 runs batted in. Three for 11 in the series. Five Sox players make it six. The number two, three, four, five, six, and seven hitters, all with four game or more hitting strings coming in tonight. Wide sweeping sliders a bit low. Ball one. The Royals on Aikens. Two run homer in the ninth. Beat the Twins today, so the magic number is still at five. That pitch is low a ball. Sox win here tonight, it would be four, and there's a possibility then if they took the two games at the Metrodome on Tuesday and Wednesday night, coupled with a California loss, Sox could clinch on the road. Chances are, though, it'll be Thursday or Friday night here against the Mariners. Breaking ball low, and it's 3-0 and out of Vance Law. Two out, nobody on, bottom of the second inning. Game tied, a run apiece. The wind-up by four, here's the pitch, and Vance takes a breaking ball outside, go high, ball four. That's the second walk issued by four. She walked Rudy in the first inning, and Law promptly stole the base, moved to third on a fly ball, and scored the run on a ground ball by Baines. So Vance Law gets the walk. Scott Fletcher playing at second base tonight, while Cruz has the night off, will step in. Scotty hitting 261, one home run, 27 RBIs, Two for 11 with a run batted in the series. The White
White Sox and Red Lobster have teamed up for an appetizing promotion beginning tomorrow when you purchase the Red Lobster White Sox Seafood Special Meal. You receive a Sox General Admission ticket free. Sox Seafood Special Meal includes an entree, regular Coke, and your choice of dessert, all for the low price of just $10.95. So stop by any Chicagoland Red Lobster, order a Sox Seafood Special Meal, and get a chance to see the Sox go for their first pennant in 24 years. got to hold up in play here for a moment as the angel first baseman Rod Carew apparently went for a got the, gonna go sunglasses got the old all-star sun yeah just about this time of night too when Carew lost that first throw from pitcher Dave Steven the all-star game blinded him led to the National League scoring an unearned run but that was about the only bright moment for the National Leaguers that night Rod's probably saying why me can't happen but two or three times a year why me Force working out of the stretch. The pitch to Fletcher, and he takes a strike call knee high inside corner. Vance Lott, first base with two out here in the home half of the second. Sox trying to close out the Angels here in this ballpark this year with a 5 and 1 record. The Angels won two out of the first three at Anaheim, and they've got four to play. 0 1 pitch to Fletcher. Strike two call knee high right over the heart of the plate. So Forsh, after walking Vance Law, jumps in front of Fletcher, two strikes and nothing. White Sox are trying to go 20 over at home against the West. They're 25 and 6 in this ballpark. Check swing, foul ball, bounced into the near end of the Angel dugout. That moved the skipper, Johnny McNamara, off his perch. Scott holds it 0-2. That pitch was up and in, and Scott was just trying to get out of the way. Going to the count. Force looking in to get the sign. Almost all of the field under complete shadow now. A few streaks of sunlight in the outfield on the right field side. Shining through under the lower deck. Breaking ball, low and away. 1-2 and two to Fletcher. The Angels have one run on two hits. The Sox, one run, no hits. That's Lodd, first base with two out here in the bottom of the second inning. Porsche has a sign from his buddy Bob Boone behind the plate. One, two pitch on the way. And the fourth ball, load inside into the dirt, got away. And there goes Vance Lodd at second. He's in with a slide just before the shortstop. Schofield could put the tag on him. He didn't beat that throw by two much. So Porsche. Helping the White Sox out here. Wild pitches. Vance Law to second where a bingo could give the White Sox the lead again. Oh, was that screwball that got away from him? Down and in. And Vance Law just beat the tag. And he went in and really jarred that left leg. He was stunned to see Boone make that throw. And Bob really hustled and surprised him, as you pointed out. I'm not so sure that... Vance doesn't have a little uh, pain in that leg. He looks pretty good, though, now walking off the bag. He may have jammed it a little bit. He came in there a little stiff-legged on a, sh a late, short slide. Well, look out there by Forrest. Here's the pitch. Fletcher hits one to left center field. Drifting in and over is Gary Pettis. He's there, and he takes it in shallow left center for the third out. No runs, no hits, a walk, a wild pitch, and a runner left after two here at Comiskey Park on a beautiful night. The Sox won, the Angels won. Know the perfect way to wind down after the 9-to-5 grind? Simple. Settle back with your favorite team and ease into your favorite beer. Budweiser. It works for you. There's no one else who does it quite the way you do. Oh, here's to you. You know it is the only one you say. It's what you do. It's fun for you. Yeah, there's nothing quite like that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. So relax and remember, it's not whether your team wins or loses. It's what you team up with during the game. It's fun for you. Oh, all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. Hot bats and ice cold bud. For all you do. This bud's for you. And as it works, St. Louis, Missouri. W-M-A-Q. M-A-Q. Oh. Yay. 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 Yay.
People love eating Jay's delicious thick cut and thin cut dip and potato chips so much, it's practically impossible to get them to stop. I stopped eating Jay's thick cut dip and... You did? I started eating Jay's thin cut dip and... <laughs> Both dipettes are tailor-made for dipping. Well, the Toronto Blue Jays had themselves some fun today. Although they're out of the pennant race, they scored 16 runs to beat the Open A 16 to 6. What a Donnybrook that must have been. Here we go to the third inning. And the first pitch is bounced to short. A lazy two-hopper to Dubzinski up and over to Walker at first base. And Steve Lebronic, the number nine hitter, swung on the first pitch from White and bounces out short to first. He came in inning 250 with seven runs batted in. Lebronic, right-handed batter. We saw him at second base for a couple of games. He's moved over to third, giving Desense the night off. One pitch and one out. Here's Gary Pettis, who has played in two of the three outfield positions and has started in all four games in this series. Hitless down 13 at bats. He bounced out to Fletcher, leading off the ball game at second base. His first time up tonight. Hoyt working quickly delivers. Fastball strike called. Zipped it over the inside edge, just below the belt. They play Pettis to swing late. They've got him played around to the left and medium in the outfield. The infield a bit around to the right, however. There's a line one hopper off Fletcher's glove. Ricochets out into center field. He tried to backhand it on the short hop, and it hit the heel of his glove and turned out into straightaway center field. It was hit very sharply, and it'll probably be a hit. No. They're going to charge Scotty Fletcher with an error. His 15th of the year. That stops in the ball club. He and Dubzinski had shared that unwanted distinction. Although a couple of Scots have been at second. One on, one out. Here's Carew. Rodney struck out, looking his first time up. Points only strikeout victim tonight. The big right-hander to the belt now goes to first. So that's the first hit of the year for Pettis, his second major league hit. He was one for five and ten late game September appearances a year ago. He's got 52 stolen bases, so he takes the lead at first. Hoyt aware of it. There goes the youngster. Pitch out. Throw to second a bit high, and they still get him. Hit first dive, and Dubinsky slapped the tag on Pettis. Fisk called a pitch out and fired a bullet down there. It was a bit high, but Dubinsky got up, got the glove down very quickly, and Pettis is out. That's 2 6 if you're keeping score at home. So the runner is taken care of. Two out, nobody on. Hoyt will go back to using the windup against Carew with a count of ball one. The windup by Hoyt, the pitch to Carew. Swing and a miss. A little flat breaker right in under the hands. As Hoyt came inside with it and completely tied up Rodney, who has opened up his stance a little bit more than usual against the right-hander Hoyt. One ball and one strike. He's pitching Carew inside. Third ball, bounce to the right side. Trickler out on the rim of the grass, picked up by Fletcher. The short throw to Walker at first, and that retires the Angels in the third. No runs, no hits and error, and nobody left. Midway through the third, the Sox won, California won. I was at the gas station the other day getting my Honda filled up, and this guy who owns the place said he hadn't seen me for a while. Well, I smiled, I drive a Honda. <laughs> he grimaced and mentioned that he was thinking about buying a new Honda Civic S, but it wasn't easy for him. I said, that's hard to understand. After all, the Civic S is painted special colors, red or black. And the red Civic S comes with special performance features, just like the black. And the black Civic S is as much fun to drive as a sports car, just like the red. He says, so which one do you choose, red or black? It's hard. Well, I said, the fact that they are both as practical as you expect a Honda Civic to be should certainly make it easy. No, he says, in the gas station business, that makes it hard. Hey, guess who has the highest octane for your car? Texaco, that's who. Hi, Bob Star Power Hope here. Now Texaco Star Power knocks out the knocks with the highest octanes you can get. Texaco Premium Unleaded with ethanol at 92 octane. New Super Regular with ethanol at 91 octane. Unleaded with ethanol at 89 octane. 
Get Texaco Star Power, the highest octane you can get to help knock out the notch in your car. Texaco Star Power for car power. Along with Kenny Wilson, this is Joe McConnell, Harry McIntyre, our network producer, here at Comiskey Park as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Jerry Davinsky, the starting shortstop tonight, a number nine hitter, will lead it off against the right-handed Ken Forrest. Davinsky, a 2.30 hitter, one homer, 29 RBIs, and there's a change-up breaking ball and a slider over the outside corner about knee-high for a call strike. Davinsky 0 for 2 in the series, just three hits and 17 tries against the Angels this year. A half swing and a foul ball back to the wire behind home plate, and it's 0 and 2. Borsch has not surrendered a hit. The Sox scored a run in the first inning when Rudy Law led off with a base on balls. Stole his 68th base of the year, moved to third on a deep drive off the bat of Carlton Fisk and came in on a ground ball by Harold Baines. Angels got their run with two out in the second. Boone doubled to right center and Wilfong brought him in with a single off Fletcher's glove. Pitch down low. One ball and two strikes to Dubzinski. He'll be followed by the top of the order, Rudy Law and Carlton Fisk. Sox trying to go 7-0 on this homestand. It would be their longest winning streak of the year. They had a Six gamer snapped in Boston. They lost two out of three to the Red Sox. Came back here and won six straight. Line single, right field off the bat of Jerry Dipsinski. So the Sox number nine hitter, the first man to come up with a hit off right hander Ken Porsche, a leadoff single here in the bottom of the third. Question was just handed to me. Do I know the largest margin between the first and second place finishers? Number nine hitter. The first man to come up with a hit off, right-hander Ken Porsche, a leadoff single here in the bottom of the third. Question was just handed to me, do I know the largest margin between the first and second place finishers since the league split up into divisions? I believe the Royals won one of their four divisional titles, either 79 or 80 by the widest margin, and I think it was 14 games. Here's Rudy Law, who scored the run, got a stolen base after walking to lead off the ball game. Dzinski at first, nobody out. Rudy takes a spike at the knees inside corner. Good pitch, 0-1. I tried to look that very fact up in the American League record book, but they do not have, they have a list of the standings and the winning percentages, but not games behind. So it'll take a long time to try to figure it out. The 0-1 pitch to Rudy, a pitch out. Dzinski not going. Jerry's got good speed on the bases. He's 11 out of 15 this year. In fact, he ranks third in the club in stolen bases behind Rudy Law and Julio Cruz, although Julio hasn't even attempted a stolen base in quite a while. He's 16 out of 20 since he joined the White Sox, still third best in the league with 49 out of 59. But most of his running was done prior to the trade that set him from Seattle and brought him here to Chicago. One ball and one strike to Law. Quick toss over there as Forrest tried to get Dubzinski, stretching his lead off the base. But the dibber was alert. Forced to the belt. Looks over his shoulder. Here's a pitch. Ground ball. Pass the first base for Carew down the right field line. The Zinsky will vote to third. Rudy going for two. Here's the throw. It's late. A double for Rudy Law. Just inside the first base bag. Carew was holding the runner and was tied up and couldn't get over in time. Rudy's 14th double of the year. And the Sox have runners at second and third and nobody out. He really pulled that pitch, a belt-high fastball. He tomahawked it right over the first base bag on one bounce. So the wheel and deal White Sox have a bet going here. Dubzinski leads off with a single, and Law sends him to third with a double. And that brings up Kyle and Fisk, who hit one about 395 feet deep in the left center field warning track his first time up. Stepping in, high score, runners at second and third, nobody out. Force appears to be ready to use the windup here. He does, he rocks into the motion, here's the pitch to Fisk, and it's low of all, ball one. Gets it now even at two apiece. Nobody out here in the bottom of the third. A capacity crowd in excess of 43,000 on hand. Here's the windup and the pitch to Fisk. Swung out and line foul down the left field side and deep into the lower seats out there. Well, that skipped around a few hands. Hopefully missed a few heads. One ball.
ball and one strike. This is really getting solid contact most of the time, whether he hits the base hit or not. Porsche looks around. The infield is way around to the left. The outfield also plays this to pull, and they're deep. 1-1 one, one pitch. But swings ground ball to short. That'll score the lead run. The throw to first by Schofield to Carew, and Fisk is out, but he gets credit for the RBI as 79th of the year as Dubitsky came in from third and Rudy Law held at second. 2-1 to one White Sox. Out. So with one out and one out and a run in, that'll bring up Baines, who scored the first Sox run of the ball game with a ground ball to second. So two ground ball outs have played at the two White Sox runs so far in this ball game against Porsche. Here's the stretch in the pitch. Baines lower to the right side, right to Wilfong, up and over to first, and Baines is out. Rudy Law moves to third on the play. Just did a little roller to second, didn't make good contact at all. So with two out, Rudy Law at third base. Greg Lazinski steps in. Greg at a high, soft one hopper back to getting Porsche on the hill his first time up. Porsche using the windup with two out of runner at third and throws a changeup up and in, in and Lazinski with a reverse twist gets out of the way. That was a real floater. Ball one. Greg was hit by a pitch last night. He leaves the club in that category. He's been plucked 12 times. Porsche into the windup the pitch. Lazinski ripped one to left field. The base hit. Another run is in. Wide turn at first and the ball hangs on with a deep single into the gap in left center field. Driving in his 85th run of the year and the Sox have a 3-1 lead. He creamed that pitch and lying it about three feet over Schofield's head at short. Three hits in the inning. And that brings up Greg Walker who struck out on a check swing his first time up. Touched by Kenny Forge. Here's the delivery. And the fork ball misses low and away. He seems to prefer that pitch more to left-handed hitters than he does right-handed hitters. There's a swing and a high pop fly into left field. Ron Jackson camps under it, now moves a bit to his left. He hauls it in for the third out. But the White Sox score two more on three hits. They leave a man at the end of three. The White Sox three, the California Angels one. Coming up now is Fred to take a swing at today's general finance baseball quiz question. I'm ready. Here comes the pitch. Since 1900, only eight pitchers have won 20 or more games with a last place team. Name the winningest National and American League pitchers in this category. The answer in a moment. But first, I'd like to make a pitch for General Finance Home Equity Loans. You smoked that one right by me. What's a home equity loan? Let's say you've lived in your house 10, 15 years. Chances are it's worth more than your mortgage. Quite a bit more. Okay, so you've got equity that you may be able to turn into cash. With a General Finance Home Equity Loan, you can borrow five, fifteen, twenty-five, fifty thousand dollars to use any way you want. What's more, there's no commission or broker fee, no hidden charges. General Finance will even work out a payback plan that works best for your budget. Once your loan is approved, you'll be able to pick up your check in a few days. How's that for being a winner? Rates right up there with Nolan Ryan, who won 22 games with the last place California Angels in 1974, and Steve Carlton, who won 27 games pitching for the last place Phillies in 72. Think what they'd have done with a winning team. The White Sox, WNAQ. Now save on Motorcraft spark plugs and oil filters, products proven a million-dollar experimental car, plus other Motorcraft products like gas-saving super-premium oil, up to 615 refunds through October 31st with proof of purchase during Motorcraft's truckload of value. Quality parts for all makes of cars. Motorcraft exceeds the need. It's available to following Motorcraft retailers, Mills Auto Parts on Davis Street in Evanston and Glenview Auto Supply in Glenview. Well, the White Sox have three runs on three hits, one error. The Angels, one run, two hits, no errors. Point with a two-run lead in quest of his 20th, trying to become the first American leaguer to win 20 since 1980 when five different pitchers did it, topped by Steve Stone's total of 25. We move into the top of the fourth inning. Sox trying to make it seven straight victories in this homestand 
a sweep of three over the A's, and they're shooting for their fourth straight win over the Angels. And to take us through the middle third, here's Kenny Wilson. Thank you very much, Joe McConnell. Mike Brown will lead it off. He stung a line drive that Rudy Law made a nice catch on in the first inning. Brown played in his 18th game this year with the Angels. He's a tall right-handed hitter who wears glasses, hitting third in the order with Ron Jackson and Jerry Naren to follow. The defense on Brown is straight away behind Lamar Hoyt. Hoyt gets the sign from Fisk. The lined up, the burly right-hander kicks and throws, and the sinker is low and tight. Ball one. Three runs, three hits, one error for the White Sox. The Angels are run, two hits, and no errors. This on the outside corner at the knees evens it at one and one. Will Fawn with the Angels RBI. Baines, Fisk, and Luzinski, the three for the White Sox. This delivery is low, two and one. Oh, what a pleasant night it is. Mostly blue sky overhead. The lights are on, just beginning to take effect. The 2-1 pitch. Brown it up the middle under the glove of Hoyt into center field. It's a base hit for Mike Brown. That's his third hit in the series. As Rudy Law throws the ball back in the third California hit of the ball game. Jackson, left fielder, cleanup man for the Angels, lined to right in the second inning. Ron Strong, right-handed hitter. The pitch to him, a fastball. He conks it on the ground that trickles into the Sox dugout. One strike. Ron Jackson is basically a high fastball hitter. He's got some punch. A lot of people figured he'd become a pretty good home run hitter in the big leagues. He's never developed that power, that consistency that some thought he would. Check of the runner. Hoyt throws. Here's a liner to left. Down the line. It'll fall. It's in there. Right on the second hop by Kittle near the warning track. Rounding second. Digging for third. Mike Brown. The throw to second. Not in time. It's a stand-up double for Ron Jackson. And the Angels trailing by two here in the fourth have runners at second and third with nobody out. A fastball in and Ron Jackson opens up and rips it down the line and left. Well, Jackson with a dozen hits against the White Sox in the nine games between these two teams this season. Left-handed hitting Jerry Naren. Nobody out. He's the D.H. Rounded to short in the second inning. The first pitch to him is a breaking ball strike call. A slider at the knees. Vance Law at third just in back of the base path. Dibzinski, Fletcher, and Walker, the other three infielders, are deep. And they play Naren as a dead pull hitter. The left-handed hitter on this pitch takes a cut, pops it back foul over our heads onto the roof. And he's in the hole, two strikes. The Sox with a 3-1 lead here in the fourth over the Angels, but the Angels are threatening. Mike Brown at third, Ron Jackson, the potential tying run out at second, nobody out. Boone is on deck. The set by Hoyt, he throws, and he misses, one and two. Get their leads. Nobody out. The set by Hoyt. He kicks, delivers a change curve. Ripped over the head of Vance Law. Down the line and left. It's a hit. Brown scores from third. Ron Jackson heading for the play. He'll score. Kittle quickly up with the ball. Throws it in to hold Naren to a single. But it's a two-run single for Jerry Naren. His first hit of the year in the American League. And the Angels have tied it at three with nobody out here in the fourth. Before Bob Boone comes up, let's pause for station identification. Saluting affiliate WRBA and the listeners in Normal, Illinois on the White Sox radio network. 
keep it right here for complete baseball coverage of all the baseball races tomorrow morning on 67 WMAQ Radio Chicago. Stay with the Sox and stay with WMAQ at 7 o'clock. A change curve didn't come true for Lamar Hoyt. Now he faces right-handed hitting Bob Boone, who doubled his first trip and the breaking ball in for a strike. Angels three, White Sox three here in the fourth. Jerry Naren, the ex-Yankee and Mariner, at first being held on by Walker. The one-strike pitch, and Boone looking to punt, takes the pitch low, one and one. The White Sox going into the ball game, leading the Western Division by 16 games over Kansas City after the Royals win this afternoon at Minnesota. Sox looking for two, Boone to bunt, and he misses it. One and two. Boone that time was kind of running up in the batter's box as if he wanted to push the bunt to the right side. Since divisional play came into baseball in 1969, the biggest margin of victory in any of the four divisions in any year was 16 games. The 71 Athletics won the American League West by 16 over Kansas City. Here's the pitch. Boone swinging away, clobbers it on the ground into the White Sox dugout. A ball, two strikes. The largest margin ever to win a title before divisional play was back in 1936. The 36 Yankees won the American League by 19 and a half games. So the White Sox here in 83 up with the big boys. Boone's ready. He clobbers a shot on one hop to third. Basketball gloves goes to Fletcher. One hop to first. Double play. Two outs as Boone scorches one to third base. And around the horn it goes. Five, four, three. with two here in the fourth have tied it but now they have nobody on and two away and stepping in is second baseman Rob Wilfong he's had the hot bat the last five weeks hitting well over 300 and he stroked a single to center to score Boone in the second inning fastball high and outside ball one first the White Sox are looking to clinch the American League West very very early Slider popped up, shallow right, off the bat of Wilfong. Gliding in under it is Baines. He's got the range, and he squeezes it for the third out of the inning. A couple of runs on three hits for California. Nobody left. There were no Sox errors. Three and a half have been played. It's a 3-3 tie. Right now, your Chicago area Midas dealers are featuring a break offer so good, it'll stop you cold. Through September, Midas will repair the brakes on your front or rear wheels for just $69. For this low price, we'll install new brake shoes or disc brake pads, inspect the hydraulic system, add fluid if necessary, turn rotors or drums, and give your brakes a professional road test. For just $69, it's a very good deal. And there's more. The Midas Brake Guarantee. We guarantee our brake shoes and disc brake pads for as long as you own your car. If they ever wear out, Midas will replace them free. You will be charged for additional parts and labor required to restore the brake system to its proper operation. So see your participating Chicago area Midas dealer during September and take advantage of this special offer. A front or rear end axle brake job for just $69. Call one of your participating Chicago area Midas shops for details. Talk baseball with Pearsall after the game on WMAQ. Zenith, the name synonymous with quality color GB, is also the number one name and value. These great Zenith values can be yours for less than you'd expect with a new line of Zenith 19-inch diagonal custom series tabletop color TVs from your Zenith dealer. Prices start as low as $278 for the Zenith quality performance you need to enjoy great TV entertainment. You'll find Zenith custom series TV is your best buy. And remember, Zenith quality is American quality. See your Zenith dealer and ask about Zenith custom series for only $278. Ken Wilson with Joe McConnell at Comiskey Park. Another huge throng watching. The Sox and the Angels are tied at three. 
Ron Kittle leads off the fourth against Ken Forge. She delivers, and a fastball on the hands popped up down the third baseline, charging in Labradich, and he makes a basket catch right on the line, halfway between third and home. It's a fair ball, and out number one. So Ron Kittle coming in with an 11-game hitting streak is 0 for 2. That'll bring to the plate Vance Law. He walked in the second inning. Vance with an eight-game hitting streak. Talking about how early it appears the White Sox are going to clinch the American League West with a magic number at five. The earliest an American League division has ever been clinched was the American League East in 1969. Baltimore won it. Pitch at the knees, a strike. The Orioles in 69 clinched the East on the 13th of September. The lined up in the pitch. A slider low, one and one. Those incredible 71 athletics. Winning it by 16 when it was all said and done. Clinched the West that year in the middle of September on the 15th. Here's a fly to right down the line. Gliding over to make the grab is Mike Brown. Just fair. A very routine play, and Vance Law is the second out here in the Sox fourth inning. Of course, one big difference in those years, I don't think there was ever a division that had only one ball club, 500 or above, and when you look at the West this time around, the Royals right now, I think are seven, maybe six under with a victory today, and they're the second place ball club. I don't think that's ever happened before where only one team played at 500 or better in a division. Well, that's a good point. Not to take anything away from the White Sox accomplishment because they've had the best one-loss record in all of baseball since the 26th of May and the second-best record overall for the year. Scott Fletcher swings and misses. One strike. You know, people will say, well, they won by default. Terrible division. You know, the White Sox have beaten or held their own against every ball club in this league with maybe the one exception of the Brewers. Well, it's been a combination lately of the White Sox doing so well and the other Western Division teams doing so poorly. Check swing and a foul back. Two strikes on Scott Fletcher in the fourth with two outs, nobody on, a 3-3 ball game. They went from about three and a half, four out to six up quicker than any, any club I've ever seen in baseball. They did it in a matter of two weeks to live. The division just simply collapsed about the time the White Sox slipped into first place on the 18th of July. And as the Sox continue to roll, the rest of the division continues to collapse. Of course, now they're playing each other, which supports it a bit. Inside, and that time Fletcher had to jump rope on that low delivery from Ken Forge. And funny, isn't it, that the tailenders, the Mariners, and the Twins are holding their own against the, the four clubs that are bunched right above them in the standings, and so they haven't been able to get back even playing their own. I'm talking about the Royals, the Rangers, and the Angels. Well, the Rangers really did this to those guys. There's a slider, strike three call, and Scott Fletcher is gone. The first one, two, three frame for Ken Forge as he picks up strikeout number two. Four innings complete, the Angels three and the White Sox three. Here are the totals through four. The Angels three runs, five hits, no errors. The White Sox three runs, three hits, and one error. Lamar Hoyt against Ken Forge. Nick Schofield leads it off. The right-handed hitting Angel shortstop clubs a ground ball to the left side, gloved by Vance Law going to his left. He guns the first, and there's one away. Well, we have another final, and boy, it's bad news for the Braves. The Dodgers rallied for four in the bottom of the ninth to win it, and uh, they now lead the National League West by three games over the Atlanta Braves, and it's going to be a long uphill climb, I'm afraid, for Joe Torre's ball club, and they've ruled the roost for most of the year, but it looks like those young Dodgers got their act together just in time. Well, the Braves have another shot head-to-head -head with the Dodgers coming up yet. Weekend series in Atlanta. White delivers a breaking ball low to right-handed hitting third sacker Steve Labradich. He's batting ninth tonight. He grounded to short his first trip. Labradich with an open stance fouls one back out of play. One and one. Talking about the Western Division teams. While the White Sox, in their last 50 games, have played... 700 ball going 35 and 15. Everybody else has really struggled. Here's a towering fly to medium depth left center off the bat of Labradich. Rudy Law camps under it, gloves it, and they're two gone. If you look at Kansas City, for instance, they have lost 12 of their last 15 games. Oakland has only two victories in their last 13. 
Minnesota has gone 5-11 and 11 in their last 16 games. And Texas, in their last 47 games, 17 wins, 30 losses. And that's just a, really a quick synopsis of how some of the other clubs in the division have played. Here's Pettis, and he takes a strike. Well, it's even more amazing when you realize the total collapse of the Rangers. They were 10 games over at the All-Star break, leading the division by two games over the Angels. The Sox were three and a half out at the time and just getting over 500 for the year. High fastball, one and one on Pettis. He's 0 for 2 tonight and 0 for 14 in this series. Getting his feet wet again in the big leagues after playing all year in the minors. White throws, change up, whip to right, line drive. Baines will play it on a hop. And Pettis finally has a hit, his first American League hit of the season. And that's a half dozen for California. A two-out, fifth inning single. The hitter will be Rod Carew. He has struck out and grounded to second base. And Rod's cooled off a bit. The red-hot White Sox hurling has held Carew to two hits in ten tries in this series. Rod has not had that big series against the White Sox this year. He's now 5 for 22 on the year. They handled him pretty well in that home-and-home -home series confrontation in June as well. Crowding in at third is Vance Law as Hoyt throws to Walker to keep Pettis, who is a speed merchant, close. Pettis played at Edmonton this year, stole 52 bases. Another toss over, and he's back. Angels White Sox, 3-3, inning number five. The outfield shades to left on Carew. This one is inside a ball. Kenny just checking the, the book on Rod Carew. He has a lifetime batting average of over 300 against every team in the American League. In fact, his lowest career batting mark is against his current teammates, California Angels. He hit 304 against them. Throw to first. Back in time is Pettis. Carew with 152 hits this year. Closing in on 3,000. Against the Sox lifetime coming into this year, he was hitting 325. There goes the runner, Pettis. The pitch taking the ball to throw high. Not in time. And Pettis has a stolen base. Pettis had a pretty good jump. And he swipes second with two outs here in the fifth inning. Pettis had a couple of stolen bases when he was up with the Angels last year. Is this a new ingredient they're working on? That's the 30th stolen base and 60 tries now. This year, Pettis won for two tonight. And that's his first steal in the four games this year with the Angels. Two balls to count. Carew rounds one on a big hop to first. Walker gloves goes to the bag to retire the side. No runs for California. One hit. They leave their first runner of the night. There were no errors. Halfway through this one, everything knotted up at three. It left Schneider's string cheese. Get some soon. Jerry Dipsensky, a right-handed hitter, batting in the number nine slot tonight for Tony La Russa, will lead off here in the fifth, trying to get something going for the Sox. They're tied with the Angels at three apiece. Ken Forge, ready to go to work. The tall right-hander has a sign from Bob Boone. The wind-up and the delivery. A slider line to right center going back. Wilf Long, and he leaps up to make the catch going away. Nice play by Rob Wilfong on the Dipsinski liner. And there's one out. Well, the last True Value White Sox baseball card night is coming up. It'll be Tuesday night, the 20th, when the Twins will be in. The first 15,000 fans attending that ball game with the Twins will receive two free White Sox player baseball cards. Tickets for the last True Value White Sox baseball card night, Tuesday, September 20th, are available here at Comiskey Park or by calling Ticketmaster at 559-1212 and you can use your charge card. Rudy Law has scored two of the three Sox runs. He walked in the first, stole second, went to third on a Fisk fly to deep center, and scored as Baines grounded out. Here's the first pitch to Rudy. The ex-Dodger looks at one well outside, ball one. Then Dibzinski let off the third with a single, went to third on Rudy Law's double. Dibzinski scored when Fisk grounded out, and then Luzinski drove home Rudy Law with his base hit. 
so that's how Rudy has scored twice. He cues a little roller off the end of the bat toward short, tough play, Schofield Field has no throw, it's the base hit! And Rudy Mars aboard for the third straight time, he's two for two. Schofield charged onto the infield grass, had no chance given the speed of Rudy Law. Horse made a good pitch. Rudy just cued it off the end of the wood. He has a steal already tonight, his 68th of the year. He's aboard with one out, and here's Carlton Fisk. The White Sox off tomorrow, and they'll play two in Minnesota, Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Our broadcast each evening will begin at 7.08 Central Daylight Time. Big lead for Rudy Law. Look over by Ken Porsche. He'll go to first. An easy toss to Carew and Rudy's back. Seventy degrees at game time. Mostly blue sky overhead. Very pleasant at the old ballpark. A good game. Bottom of the fifth to check a Rudy Law at first. He's there with one out. A pitch out. And Rudy isn't going. One ball to count. This the hitter. to see such a big crowd out here again. The White Sox quickly closing in on the two million attendance mark. Angels in double play death. The look to first throw over and Rudy on his hands and knees crawls back in. Nice to have the Brubakers group here. David Hendrickson has a gang at the old ballpark tonight. And a group here from the Paul G. Stewart Center. Throw to first. Carew's tag not quite in time. Rudy gets his paw in. Also the folks from the St. Jude Holy Name Society in attendance. And a vociferous group of people from Waldo Pepper's Pub on hand tonight here at Comiskey Park. Good to have everybody here with us. Another throw to first and Rudy Law is back in standing. Mouse with Borge measures his lead. The set by Ken. He comes to the plate. Another pitch out. And the first two pitches to Fisk are pitch outs. 2-0. Oh. Well, you don't see that that often. Now Davey Nelson goes over to whisper into the ear of Rudy Law. The old rule is you can't pitch out here, right? Rudy has about as big a lead as he'll get. Throw to first. And he dives back in at first. Another throw over, Rudy back in standing this time. Ricky Henderson of Oakland leading the American League in stolen bases. Going into play today, he was four short of 100. This waiting patiently at the plate. The right-handed hitter is waiting on his back foot. Here's the pitch. Rudy's going. The pitch is taking a ball. The throw is strong, but on one hop, it skips by the second baseman, Wilfong. Going to third is Rudy Law, and he's in safely, and the crowd loves it here at Comiskey Park. Bases tonight for Rudy, give him 69 and an error on the catcher Boone as the ball skipped through. It was not that bad a throw, it was there in a hurry, but it kind of short hop Wilfong and it's an error. And the White Sox with one out have Rudy Law at third base. Well, Wilfong just backed away from the ball. Rudy coming in there with those spikes flying and the ball kind of scooted. That's a 14th throwing error on Bob Boone this year. It's amazing the way Law just takes over a ball game when he gets on base. The infield pulled in, this the hitter, slider, and a good one. 3-0 at the knees is a strike call. This, that deep drive to left center on the warning track, 395 feet away for an out in the first inning. Then with a runner at third. In the third, grounded out to pick up an RBI, is 79th of the season. Fisk is 0 for 2, but he's been advancing men tonight, trying to extend his hitting streak to 15 straight. The White Sox here trying to break the tie. Boar's working from the stretch. 
The look to third. The infield to the grass. The pitch swung on, popped out of play straight back. And it's a full count on Fisk. Kenny, do you realize that Rudy has scored two runs already tonight, giving him 88 on the year? He is currently the eighth leading run scorer in this league. When you realize that he has been platooned for maybe uh, 25, 30% of the year, that is truly amazing. What a catalyst. Rudy leading away at third in foul territory in front of Coach Jim Leland. LeBronich, Schofield, Wilpon, Carew pulled in. The pitch from Porsche on the way. Swung on, popped up, foul territory. Coming back Boone, but this one will be well out of play. And the count remains full on Carlton Fisk. On deck, Harold Baines. It would be interesting to break down Fisk's statistics since they moved him into the number two spot to see how many times he has driven Rudy Law in. I would have to guess that over 50% of Carlton Fisk's RBI since mid-June has been Rudy Law. The outfield is deep. They shade a bit to left. All knotted at three, bottom of the fifth with one out. Rudy Law has his lead at third. Bush taking a long time to get the sign. He's ready to stretch. The look to third, the pitch on the way, an inside fastball pulled foul. And it'll go into the first row of box seats beyond the Sox dugout. Full count. On Fisk, who was jammed that time, cracked the bat, and he'll have to get a new piece of wood. Well, the Sox, I'm sure, are going to enjoy a well-deserved off day tomorrow. Then the two games, Tuesday, Wednesday nights at the Metrodome. Tuesday night, Richard Dotson will go against Frank Viola. They'll have to adjust going back in there at the Metrodome playing before thousands of empty seats. <laughs> that will be Britt Burns and Al Williams on Wednesday night. And then it's right back here for the final homestand of the regular season. Four with the Mariners and three with Minnesota. This stepping back in. Number 72. Trying to bring in Rudy Law from third with one out here in the fifth. All tied. And a 3-2 pitch awaited. Here it comes. Ball four, and the Sox will have runners at first and third for Harold Payne, who won the third game of this series early this morning with his dramatic two-out, 12th-inning home run, his 15th of the year. Porsche now has walked three. the middle. Will Fong and Schofield in double play depth. LeBranich at third will play even with a bag. Fisk at first. Rudy Law at third. Baines, the left-handed hitter, is ready. The pitch to him. Cut on. Found it. A couple of big hops to Will Fong. He short hops. Tags Fisk. One out. Pull the first. They get the double play. Good play by Will Fong. He had a tough short hop to contend with to get that 4-3 twin killing. No runs in the inning. One hit. One error. And one Sox runner left. Five complete tonight. It's a 3 3 tie. Mel Allen and Dick Cavett for Apple Computer. Mel, who's baseball's most versatile player? You could say Bert Campanaris. He once played all nine positions in a single game. Well, well who's your pick, Dick? Might say the remarkable Apple IIe personal computer. How's that? Well, it's now playing for several major league teams at the same time, helping to raise RBIs and lower ERAs. The 2 is a big hit in other fields, too, and at home. It's got more software, more applications for the home than any other personal computer. And right now, the Apple IIe is priced at a steal. Well, how about that? Say, Dick, how about a Burt Campanaris autographed baseball for an Apple IIe? No. You'll find the Apple computers at Computerland in Evanston, Computer Base Incorporated, Sterling, and Computerland in Niles. Whether you're working on a complicated home renovation project or a simple remodeling job, your work is not complete until you've applied the finishing touches. Hi, Pat Summerall for True Value Hardware Stores to say a coat of paint can provide that final touch. And quality True Test Oral brushes have tapered polyester bristles, so you can apply all types of paint on all kinds of surfaces. For performance and value, get True Test Oral brushes in assorted sizes and styles at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Protect your hands from damage caused by rough work in cold weather by slipping them into warm, comfortable Wells Lamont gloves from participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. With Joe 
Joe McConnell, this is Ken Wilson. Great to have you listening tonight, being part of the fun here at Comiskey Park. A capacity crowd looking on, a 3-3 ball game through five. Lamar Hoyt trying to notch his 20th win of the year. As tuned up, he's ready to face the three, four, and five angel hitters, Mike Brown, Ron Jackson, and Jerry Nerud. Ken Porsche has pitched well tonight for the Angels, trying for his 12th win of the campaign. He's already beaten the Sox twice this year with complete game efforts. Mike Brown is one for two. He's stung the ball twice to center. In the first, Rudy Law with a diving gag. Grab of his liner robbed him of a hit. Breaking ball strike in the outside corner. Mike was drafted by the Angels in the amateur free agent draft in 1980 in the seventh round. Slow curve bends wide of the front corner of the plate. One and one. He's from the Bay Area. Mike Brown, a right-handed hitter. He's hitting 219. White's inside fastball is whipped at and fouled to the screen as he got Brown on the hands. And Mike steps out and confers with Rocky Rowe to find out if that was a strike or not. One and two. Year-old Lamar Hoyt won 19 last year, is 19 this year. Gets the strike at the knees with a fastball. Brown is out of there. For Hoyt, that's his second strikeout, his first since he caught Carew looking in the first inning. Boy, there's nothing like being out here in person at Comiskey Park to watch the White Sox. But if you can't be at the game, another great way to get it is at home on Sports Vision, the complete action package of pro and amateur sports featuring the White Sox, Blackhawks, the Bulls, and the Sting. Ron Jackson, a double in two tries. There's a strike, a sweeping curve over the outside corner. You can order Sports Vision by calling on TV at 699-6688. Slider just wide, one and one. Sports vision, that's the thing to have, the place to be. Or you can call your local cable company, of course, if you've got cable in your area to get sports vision. Deep drive to right, slugged by Ron Jackson to the edge of the warning track, and now back in a few steps to grab it, his veins. Two up and two down. So we hope you'll have sports vision. There's going to be a lot of activity, certainly with the Blackhawks, the Bulls, Indoor soccer with a sting and more college basketball than ever with Sports Vision this winter. Again, on TV, 699-6688, or call your local cable company. Here's Jerry Naren. He drove a single to left to score two in the fourth inning. First pitch wide, ball one. The Angels' first run driven home by Rob Wilfong in the second frame. After the Sox had scored in the first, deleted one to nothing. Fastball outside, 2-0. Baines, the first inning RBI to make it 1-0. And the Wilfong RBI in the second to tie it at 1. Wide again, 3-0. The Sox got two in the third. RBIs from Fisk and Luzinski to take a 3-1 lead. And the Naren two-run single in the fourth to tie it at 3. Here's a drive to right center. Naren has really... Bolted it, going back and reaching up to make a sensational catch is Rudy Law. He takes extra bases away from Merritt. A running grab at the foot of the wall to the right of the 401 marker in right center as Merritt really tagged that one. And a standing ovation for Rudy Law as the Angels are gone. One, two, three. After five and a half, the Angels and White Sox tied at three. Some banks think anyone running their own business today is asking for trouble. They told me my cerebral soundness was definitely doubtful. With so many financial options, you need a bank that makes sound recommendations. They told me the upward trend of the downslide curve was indubitably indicative and understands your special needs. They told me my comprehensive computations didn't fit their formulation. At the Lane Banks, we don't think you need a lot of financial double talk. They told me the ramifications of my financial situation were indeterminate at best. We think you need help. I need help. At the Lane Banks, 
we believe in business, and we back that belief with total assets of over $1.5 billion and a combined per loan limit of over $10 million, plus the people and the know-how you need. I need the Lane Banks. Call 1-800-572-3337 to arrange for a Lane business banker to analyze your company's banking needs. The Lane Banks include Pioneer, Northbrook, Lakeview, and Northwest National Bank. If you need a bank that believes in business, you need the Lane Banks. Didn't I just say that? You just said that. Oh, I thought so. Members FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lenders. The White Sox, WMAQ. If you're a Sox fan, you've got plenty to cheer about these days. There's the winning spirit that's taking the Sox to the playoffs and the winning taste of Dubuque White Sox Pluffers. Dubuque White Sox Pluffers are the official hot dog of the Chicago White Sox, the same ones served at Comiskey Park. They're big in a bun, gigantic on taste, with a mild, meaty flavor Sox fans can't get enough of. So pick up some Pluffers before the next Sox game. That way you'll have two things to cheer about. Another White Sox win and the winning taste of Dubuque White Sox Pluffers. Great ball game, Angels and Sox tied at three. Bottom of the sixth inning, our big payoff inning, and Greg Luzinski hitting for Virginia Stonequist of Schaumburg, Illinois. The first offering from Ken Porsche's high ball one. Luzinski has already come through in two tries tonight. He had an RBI single in the third. The bull hitting an even 250. He's ready. And the pitch on the way. It's a slider in there, and it's a ball and a strike. Virginia Stonequist, Schaumburg, Illinois, our first contestant here in the big payoff inning. Of course, a home run means a Zenith 25-inch custom console TV for our contestant. There's a foul out of play off to the right, and the ball in the hole, one and two. Well, you got an interesting group of hitters up here. Could make it interesting. Luzinski, Walker, Kittle, and Law if they get that far. Well, what a delightful night. That little front we had come in here last night, bringing that shower, cool things off delightfully here. Last two nights, it was 92 degrees at game time. Tonight, 70. Foul back, still one and two. By the way, Kenny, if the White Sox draw 43,094 here tonight, they go over the two million. Wait a minute, this can't be right. Probably go over two million on Friday, I yeah. would think. Which could be the night they clinch it. A foul back and a fastball. One ball, two strikes on Luzinski. That's yeah, over 1.9 tonight. Be a great night to be here on Friday night. That would seem a likely night to go over two million and a probable night to clinch the pennant if it's not done on Wednesday or Thursday. But good money says Friday would be the night to well, be here. I'm picking Thursday. The way to do it is show up both nights. Yeah, that you'll be sure. Luzinski leading off. The breaking ball low and outside from Ken Forrest. Two balls, two strikes. I'm going to bet that it's definitely Thursday if the White Sox win this ball game. Well, then you'll have more information than we have now, you see. <laughs> Here's a slider and the ball out in front of it. Cues it foul off to the right. Two and two. Luzinski, Walker, and Kittle in our big payoff inning. Not Thursday, but... Good money says Friday would be the take to well, be here. I'm picking Thursday. The way to do it is show up both nights. <laughs> yeah, that's you'll good. be sure. Luzinski leading off the breaking ball low and outside from Ken Forrest. Two balls, two strikes. I'm going to bet that it's definitely Thursday if the White Sox win this ball game. Well, then you'll have more information than we have now, you see. <laughs> Here's a slider and the ball out in front of it. Cues it fouled off to the right. Two and two. Luzinski, Walker, and Kittle in our big payoff inning, trying to break the 3-3 deadlock. The lined up, the pitch. Breaking ball grounded back to the mound. The head of the bat goes to third base, and the throw by Porsche to Carew retires Luzinski. Boy, he's had dozens of broken bats this year. And for Virginia Stonequist, I guess we could say dozens of Dubuque Pumpers. Anyway, a certificate for three pounds of Dubuque Pumpers, the official hot dog of the White Sox. So, good eating, Virginia Stonequist of Schaumburg. Boy, you talk about the number of bats Walker, or rather, uh, Luzinski has broken this year, but the shattered, the way he shatters them is incredible. Never seen bats explode like that. That awesome strength to the bull must be part of it. Walker, left-handed hitting first, Sackers 0 for 2. He takes a fastball wide. He's batting for Curtis Reed of Chicago. Lousy timber. 
<laughs> dry rot. <laughs> Actually, the, the bat companies are quite concerned because they say that because of the narrowness of the handle now, and the thickness of the barrel, the end of the bat, just can't stand the stress. That's why they're fracturing the way they are. Swing and a miss on a curve, one and one. Because the style now is to go for the thinner handle, putting all the weight down at the end of the bat. Rice has one of the thinnest handled bats you'll ever see in your life, and I saw him break a bat once trying to check a swing. There are some thin handled ones, and Jim's certainly is thin. I guess Stan Musial used the thinnest handled bat ever, less than an inch. Ground ball, the third short hop by Lebradich. Nice play over to Carew. Two up, two down. A couple of ground balls and a certificate for the plumpers going out to Curtis Reed of Chicago as Walker couldn't come through for our second contestant tonight. Let's see what Ron Kittle, trying to extend his 11-game hitting streak, can do for Patricia Kaczynski of Evergreen Park, Illinois. Patricia Kaczynski, our third contestant tonight in our big payoff in it. The first pitch from Ken Porsche to Ron Kittle is a breaking ball low and outside. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Kittle could not check his swing. The call made by first base umpire Dale Ford. 3-3, bottom of the sixth. Cubs lost today. 2-1 to one to St. Louis. Wide curve, 1-1. One and one. Phillies beat Pittsburgh 5-3. Montreal shut out the Mets 4 to nothing. The Reds a 4-2 winner at San Diego. The Dodgers beat Atlanta 7-6 and San Francisco top Houston 3-2. Inside and high, and Kittle has to dump down to the ground in a hurry. Valuable property there, and all his supporters unhappy with Ken Force. That was right at his head. out twice to the left side. Ken Porsche making his fifth try for his 12th win of the year, having a strong outing. He's allowed but four hits. The pitch inside again and a bit high, three and one. Porsche has been tough as his record would indicate against the White Sox, and yet they have roughed him up more this year than they did in previous outings. He won both games by identical 7-4 to four margins. Porsche, the product of Oregon State, delivers. Breaking ball popped up, up on the roof, straight back, and out of the yard, 3-2. Well, he gave the White Sox absolutely nothing last year. They beat him in a very tough 2-1 to one ball game, and he shut him out here through a two-hitter, I believe, on June 15th of last year. The payoff pitch. He starts to swing, tries to check it. They go to first to Dale Ford, and Kittle is out. He went around, says Dale Ford. It's a strikeout for Ken Porsche, and Kittle does not come through for Patricia Kaczynski of Evergreen Park in our big payoff inning. So all three of our contestants receive the consolation prize tonight. The Sox go in order. On to the seventh inning, a 3-3 tie. Some things speak for themselves. Day mornings on WMAQ. Hello again, everybody. This is Harry Carey. Now you can cure your house of a blouse without hurting your budget. Just give it a fresh coat of color with True Test Paints from True Value Hardware Stores. During fall paint savings time, you can get Easy Care Latex Flat Enamel Wall and Trim Finish in 44 colors and white for only $13.98 a gallon. But hurry, 
Fall paint savings prices expire September the 11th at participating True Value hardware store. Four play, seventh inning at Comiskey Park. Here's Joe McConnell. Thank you very much, Kenny Wilson. We're all tied at three apiece. The Angels have out hit the White Sox six to four and through six innings. Hoyt has thrown just 63 pitches. That's just a little more than 10 pitches per inning, which is very low. Four should throw 93 pitches. The delivery to Bob Boone leading off the seventh inning for the Angels is low a ball. He doubled the right center with two out in the second and came on to score the first run of the game. He pulls the second pitch foul on the ground, jumps over the railing and into the camera box just beyond the far end of the third base Sox dugout here. And the count is a ball and a strike. In the fourth inning, Booney hit into a 5-4-3 around the horn double play. The 134th turned into the Sox infield this year. He lines another foul into the low seats just over the box seat railing halfway down the third base line and the count is one and two. Soon to be followed by Will Fong and Schofield here in the top of the seventh. Sox trying for a four-game sweep of the Angels and a seven-game sweep for the week-long homestand. Be their longest winning streak of the year. Slider lowered away a ball, two and two the count. Soon, veteran catcher, most of his years with the Philly organization. Second full season with the Angels. He'll be a free agent at the end of 1983. Point rocks into the motion. Here's the pitch. And the breaking ball a bit high and away, just missing outside with a slider, and the count is full now. Ball three and strike two. Boyd has not walked anybody. He struck out two to move into seventh place on the strikeout list. 3-2 pitch. Low, a ball. He walked him, and that is only the 27th walk issued by Lamar Hoyt this year, and it comes to the leadoff batter, Bob Boone, here in the seventh. 27 walks in 229 innings pitched for the big guy from Columbia, South Carolina this year. That is a phenomenal control record. The only one I can think of that would be better than that for innings pitched was a couple of years when Fergie was in his prime. One year, he walked, I think, something like 39 batters in 360 innings. Here's Rob Wilfong. He singled in Boone with the first angel run in the second. Last time up, he popped up the shallow right. He squares around the front, and he bunts it foul into the dirt, jumps back over the catcher, Carlton Fisk's head, and rolls behind home plate. Wilfong, one of the better burners in the league. I told you before that 300 year he had in 79, playing most every day with the Twins. He had 22 bunt hits that year, and also led the league in sacrifices, so he was doing a lot of a lot of bunting that year and very successful at it. Wait. Slowing down the pace here a little bit now with a potential lead run at first. Nobody out. Fastball high and away. And Vance Law came racing in from third base and he was only about 20 feet away from Wilfong when Rob took the pitch high for a ball. One and one to count. Dodgers beat the Braves scoring four in the bottom of the ninth inning. At Dodger Stadium today, 7-6, to six, they take two out of three from the Braves over the weekend and extend their National League Western Division lead to three full games. Right to the belt, here's the pitch, Will Fong yanks that foot back in the bat as well as he takes it low and inside, ball two. It's coming Saturday night, final home Saturday of the year here at Comiskey Park, it's United Ski Cap Day, and the folks who have been the fly the friendly skies, Charter all the White Sox flights all year. United sponsoring the ski cap night here Saturday night. First 7,500 of you youngsters age 14 and under receive a free White Sox sock cap. There's a strike call. Two and two to count. Will Fong looked it over, decided against it. That Rocky Rowe shot that right arm in the air, called an knee-high strike, and the count is two and two. Three-three tie here in the seventh. Hoyt and four have been dueling. Lamar trying to become the first 20-game winner of the year in either league and the first in the American League since 1980. Now the big right-hander to the belt. Look at first. The 2-2 pitch on the way to Wilfong. Swing and a miss. He struck him out of the foul tip and punch held on. A breaking ball. Belt high right in into the hand. And Lamar Hoyt notches his third strike out of the game. Number 135 on the year. And that puts him one ahead of Gidry. So he has moved up the ladder now into sixth spot in the American League in strikeouts. His teammate Floyd Bannister is third high in the league. The face on balls a minute ago, Chuck Driver tells us, the first walk in 31 innings pitched by Lamar Hoyt. The stretch. The look at first. 
And a throw over there. Schofield, the batter, he is lined out to right. Deep to right. Baines made a nifty over the head, leaping one-handed catch. Last time up, he bounced to Vance Law third. So he's 0 for 2 tonight, 2 for 11 in the big leagues, all in this series with the Angels. Here's the pitch. Schofield gets jammed. He bounces one to short. Dubzinski, tough throw to Fletcher, and they get the out there, and Fletcher is filled before he can get the relay away. As Boone slid into him, he was stretched out kind of precariously there as Dubzinski had to charge that slow chopper and throw back. And it was a tough play for Dubzinski, and he almost had Scotty hung out to dry there. They get the force play, 6 4 second now with two out Schofield aboard, and that'll bring up Labratitz, the number nine hitter. been an easy double play to turn and Schofield hitting the ball harder. But he hit that ball about three inches off his hands. The Braddock has bounced a short and fly to center tonight. He had three hits in last night's ball game, knocked in a run. Hoyt working out of the stretch, turns and goes over to first. Hangs out the sign for the big right-hander. Here's the pitch to Labradich. He swings and it's a high fly ball to left field, medium deep. Kittle circles under it, near the line, takes it for the out, and the Angels are gone in the seventh. No runs, no hits, the leadoff walk, and one man left. It's stretch time as we head to the bottom of the seventh here. A capacity crowd at Kaminsky Park. The score is tied at three. I was having my Honda service recently, and I took the opportunity to look at the new Honda automobiles in the showroom. Now, a customer thinking that I was a salesman asked, would you mind showing me a new Honda? Well, no, I said, I, I wouldn't mind. Might be fun. And I said to the customer, one way to look at a new Honda is with your ears. When he looked at me, I could listen to the sound the car doors make when you close them. That tight, solid sound tells you about the rest of the car. The customer said, well, that's an eye-opener to me. Well, my car was ready by then, so I turned my wide-eyed friend over to a real Honda salesman and went merrily on my way. But just in case I'm not there the next time you're in a Honda showroom, remember this. After you kick the tires, listen to the door. for Texaco. You hear the knocking in that car? Now Texaco Star Power helps you knock out the knock for the highest octanes you can get. Texaco Premium Unleaded with ethanol at 92 octane. New Super Regular with ethanol at 91 octane. Unleaded with ethanol at 89 octane. Get Texaco Star Power, the highest octanes you can get to help knock out the knocks in your car. Texaco Star Power for car power. You're listening to Chicago White Sox Baseball on WMAQ. White Sox Baseball is also brought to you in part by Schneider Cheese and the Lane Bank Group. Vance Law will lead off the home half of the seventh against the veteran 36-year-old right-hander Ken Force. Vance has walked and flying to right. He's over one tonight. Swings and bounces one to the left of the shortstop. Schofield over his left, scoops it up on the short hop and throws across and Vance is gone. One pitch thrown and one out recorded here in the bottom of the seventh. So Vance is over two tonight, trying to extend his hitting string to eight straight. Scott Fletcher has flied to center and looked at a call third strike over the third, the seventeenth time all year that Fletcher has struck out either taking or swinging. Force delivers and Scotty takes the ball high and away. Porsche has spanned three, walked three, giving up four hits, three runs all earned in six and a third innings. Point through seven innings. He's allowed three runs earned on six hits. He has struck out three and walked one. Going away, ball two. And Hoyt has been a lot more judicious with the number of pitches thrown. Two and oh, the count. One out, nobody on. Bottom of the seventh, tied at three. Sox took the lead with a run in the first. Angels tied it with a run in the second. There's a drive into right center field, and it's going to die. And back is Wilfong to make the catch. That little pop-up just kind of hung up there, and Rob got back easily. And Fletcher carried his bat about two-thirds of the way down the line at first base. Two gone.
Now the number nine hitter, the shortstop tonight, Jerry Dudzinski, single to right, leading off that two-run third inning that snapped the one-all tie. Dudzinski scored the first of the two runs that inning. Last time up in a soft looping liner that Will Fong back settled against. So he's one for two tonight, stepping in there now with two out, nobody aboard, bottom of the seventh. Four swings into the windup, here's the pitch, and the slider low and away, ball one. Tigers beat the Brewers, six to four up in County Stadium. They took three out of four from Milwaukee over the weekend. Swing and a miss on a pitch outside, one and one. Toronto buried the A's up in Canada today, 16 to six. Red Sox over at Cleveland, four to one at Cleveland. The Royals beat the Twins up at the Metrodome, three to one. So the magic number still stands at five. Here's the pitch. Dubinsky takes low ball. The Orioles made it three out of four over the weekend, beating the Yankees in New York today, five to three. And the Texas Rangers edged the Seattle Mariners out in Seattle, two to one. Two and one to count on Dubzinski here. Bottom of the seventh inning, two out, nobody aboard. Force delivers, and Dubzinski pops it up. First base side, Carew in foul territory, drifts through the coach's box, vacated by Davey Nelson, gloves it on the edge of the warning track in front of his own dugout for the third out. An easy one, two, three frame here in the seventh for four. She seems to be getting tougher as the game progresses. He's now retired seven in a row. And at the end of seven, we're all square. The White Sox three, the Angels three. Welcome to General Finance. How can we help you? Ah, have I got trouble. Oh. Monday, the refrigerator broke down. I'm sorry to hear that. The station wagon died on Tuesday. Oh, that is. And Wednesday, the roof started leaking. My word. No, my plumbing system. Two pipes broke on Thursday. I hope that's all. No way. Friday, my oak tree fell on my neighbor's carport. Your neighbor wasn't... No, but his car was. Oh, well, I guess anybody can have a bad week. <laughs> easy for you to say. Well, that's because it's so easy to get the help you need from General Finance. I'm talking about a lot of bills and a lot of monthly payments. Right. And a General Finance consumer loan will consolidate all those bills into one manageable monthly payment. We'll set up a budget you can live with. You'll know exactly what your payment will be. No hidden costs or fees to pay. If your loan's okay today, you should get your check tomorrow. And by the way, your interest may be tax deductible. Oh, boy. Am I glad I came to General Finance. Call General Finance for a large home equity loan up to $50,000 or for a smaller consumer loan. See the white pages for the office nearest you. Now save on Motorcraft spark plugs and oil filters. Products proven in million-dollar experimental cars. Plus other Motorcraft products like gas-saving super premium oil. Up to six fifty in refunds through October 31st with proof of purchase during Motorcraft's truckload of value. Quality parts for all makes of cars. Motorcraft exceeds the need. Available at the following Motorcraft dealers, North Suburban Auto Supply Company on Howard Street in Evanston at APS Incorporated on North Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville. Into the eighth inning we go here at Comiskey Park, and it'll be the top of the Angel lineup. Gary Pettis, the young switch hitting outfielder, followed by Rod Carew and Mike Brown to face right-hander Lamar Hoyt in quest of his 20th victory of the year. Pettis is bound to second, reached on Fletcher there, and singled and stole his first base last time up. Swing and a miss on a sinker, 0-1. Well, the Bears evened up their record, beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers before more than 58,000 at Soldier Field Day, 17-10. Terry Schmidt's fourth period interception in return for the touchdown was the difference. 1-2 pitch, and it's a bit low inside. Make that 1-1 one one now. Everybody in the NFC Central now has lost at least a game in the first two weeks of the season. Vikings were beaten Thursday night by the Niners. Swing and a miss. Good fastball. He blew it right by the youngster. Detroit lost again today. They're on two as well as the Bucks. Green Bay beaten by the Steelers, 25-21. The biggest upset of the day, though, belonged to the Seattle Seahawks, upsetting the New York Jets, 17-10. One-two pitch on the way. Foul back. Good hack at a fastball up and away. And Pettis a little late. Count holes at one ball, two strikes. So the Bears, along with the Vikings and the Green Bay Packers, are tied after two weeks of play for the NFC Central Division lead with the Lions and the Bucks trailing. Make the Lions one and one. They beat Tampa Bay last week. So four clubs are at one and one. Tampa Bay 0 oh and two. Here's the one-two pitch to Pettis, and a slope curve is bounced to the shortstop. Dubzinski takes it on the third hop. It comes up for him, and he throws him out. One gone here in the Angel eight. Rod Carew, hitless in three tries tonight. 0 for 1 last night in a pitch hitting roll. In fact, he's 
all for the series since he picked up two hits and three at bats in game one. He's now two for 11 for the four games here as he steps in with one out in the eighth inning. Plus Rodney puts a real burst on and Boggs goes into a tailspin. It looks like Wade Boggs is going to win a batting title in his second year in the big league. Strike call, good fastball at the knees. Of course, for Carew, if he could catch him, would be his eighth batting title. Lifetime 333 hitter. Slow curve, and it just missed outside, and Hoyt just turned his back away from Rocky Rowe. He wanted that one. He tried to backdoor the outside edge. He really threw a balloon ball up there, and it just missed. One and one to count. Carew with that open stance, knee slightly bent. He swings and slices one down the left field side. Long run for Kittle. And it is a fair ball just inside the line. And Carew, halfway to second, puts on the brakes and goes back to first base as Kittle short hopped that. He almost overran it. It was a very tough catch for him. And he made a great play and got that ball into second base in a hurry. That ball landed just inside the foul line. Let's pause right now for station identification. You're listening to the Chicago White Sox Radio Network. So Carew comes up with his first hit. That's the first hit for Rodney Carew in this series since he picked up two in the opener. A one-out single here in the eighth. The Angels have out-hit the White Sox. The stretch by Hoyt. Mike Brown, the batter, and a throw to first instead. Carew had a stolen base in the first game of this series, but he has only five and ten attempts this year. A quick throw over there. It looked like Rodney had something in his eye, and he hadn't returned to the bag, and Hoyt just took that return throw from Walker and fired it right back over there, but Carew jumped back on the bag in time. Stretch for the right-hander, the pitch to Brown. Strike call, a perfect pitch, a slider down and away on the outside edge. Mike Brown now with three hits in the series. Retired on a great one-handed diving sliding catch by Rudy in the first inning. Went off the fourth with a single and scored a run. Last time up, he was called out on strike, so he's one for three tonight. Hoyt again goes over to first base to keep Carew close. Rodney playing with a thick foam rubber pad on his right elbow. Now Hoyt has the sign. Here's the pitch. And a pitch out. Carew wasn't going. A ball and a strike to Mike Brown. There's one out, one on here in the eighth. We're tied at three. Sox led one nothing. Angels tied it. In the three, the Sox had a three to one lead. The Angels came right back on a two run single by Naren in the fourth to tie it. That's where we've been ever since. And now we're in the top of the eighth. Hoyt has not thrown all that many pitches. There's a bouncer in the hole into left field, a base hit. Sharp ground ball, and Carew goes about a third of the way, rounding second down to third, and then decides he'd better stay right there. So back-to-back -back singles by Carew and Brown here, and the Angels have a threat brewing here in the eighth with one out. And Ron Jackson, who has been tough all year for the Sox to handle, did a step in. Jackson, a last-minute replacement for the better-known Reggie Jackson, who was a late scratch, and... Really, uh, Ronnie Jackson has done a lot more damage than Reggie has, at least as far as the White Sox are concerned this year. In this ball game, he's lined to right, doubled and scored, and in a deep fly ball on the warning track and right his last time up, and he has 12 hits down, 29 at-bats on the year with eight RBIs. A couple of home runs, including one against Bannister last night. Two on, one out. The infield will play up, hoping to turn a double play here. The outfield, medium deep straight away. Here's the pitch, and a fastball a bit too close, and Hoyt came in with a delivery as Dudzinski broke to the bag behind Carew. They had him off about six feet off the bag, but Hoyt apparently wasn't looking out there and didn't see it. I'll tell you, the base runners have to beware with this Sox infield. They're always trying to pick somebody off, and they've been successful a few times of late. That pitch is low ball, and Dennis Lamp begins to heat up now in the White Sox bullpen. the count to Ronnie Jackson with an upright stance just slightly open. Here's the pitch. Swung on, bounced in the dirt. There's third baseman Van Slaughter, second for one. Fletcher's relay, double play! 5-4-3 around the horn for the second time tonight. And the White Sox crank out their 135th of the year. Quick two hopper started by Van Slaughter. Two runs, two hits. One left, we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still tied at three. Hello, sports fans. This is the official voice of Apple Computer, Kit Kat. With the voice of baseball, Mel Allen. <laughs> 
And I'm proud to announce that Major League Baseball teams have signed up the remarkable Apple IIe personal computer. Drafted to help managers pick the best batting orders, pitching rotations, and defenses. And to help them scout the minors. Even the announcers are using Apple IIe's to tell the fans more about the players. So no matter what field you're in or on, Apple IIe can help you be more productive. You know, Mel, I've always thought I might make it as a baseball announcer. Listen, there's a drive, it is way back, it is going, go it is gone! I'd stick to pitching apples, Dick. Join the major leagues. Get an Apple IIe. You'll find Apple computers at Mead Computer Center in Munster, Indiana, Compu Shops in Chicago and the Chicagoland area, Consult Your Yellow Pages, and Ideal Computer Systems, located in Kankakee, Illinois. W-M-A-Q. M-A-Q. Let's see, 12 typewriters cost us. You've invested a lot in the tools of your trade. Two word processors. You want them to pay off. Three copiers. You want to keep them busy. Six phone lines are blowing this company. That's why you also invest in the Yellow Pages, where your ad is on the job in homes and businesses. My executive chairs, brown leather, the prints. The Bell System Yellow Pages. It's the small investment that keeps your big investments paying off. Well, Fifteen not-so-executive chairs. Well, up on the Diamond Vision board, welcome champions. In honor of the Denver Bears, the six players that have just joined the White Sox today to finish out the regular season, veteran right-handers Randy Marks, who was up briefly during the season, and Steve Mura, Joel Skinner, the hottest young catching prospect in the minors, Chris Nyman, who's been up and down the last couple of years with the White Sox, Jim Hewlett, making his first appearance in the Sox uniform, and Casey Parsons, who was with the Mariners for a while. He was second in the league in RBIs and game-winning hits. Just a great year for John Bowles and the Denver Bears. Rudy Law, who has been just about the story, both defensively and offensively for the White Sox tonight, leading off the bottom of the eight, takes a breaking ball low. Rudy walked, stole a base, scored a run without a hit in the first inning. Doubled and scored in the third. Got an infield single, went to third on a stolen base and an overthrow, and they couldn't get him in. And he played two fine catches defensively in the outfield. Two for two, he takes a strike at the knees, and the count is one and one. Rudy now has scored 88 runs. And has 69 stolen bases and 80 attempts, trailing only Ricky Henderson. One ball and one strike. Top of the order. Law to be followed by Fisk and Baines. This will be the last time around, possibly, for some of these guys trying to extend their hitting strings tonight. Force has been tough. Five deep to right field. Out of the right field corner. It is a fair ball off the base of the wall. Rudy flying around second night. Puts on the break. His second double of the night. His 15th of the year. He's three for three. And the lead runners at second base with nobody out. That ball hit off the base of the wall. Just inside the line. seventh free hit ball game of the year and he's been on base all four times tonight now the good news is that John McNamara has to be thinking bullpen and from a White Sox point of view the Angels bullpen has certainly struggled so this could be the big opportunity to pull out the 84th victory of the year here in the eighth inning Rudy Law has three of the five hits off four now here's Carlton Fisk He's driven in a run tonight. Deep fly ball to center. Ground ball to short. Scoring a run in the third. He walked the last time up. He's 0 for 2. Trying to extend his hitting string to 15 here. He's going to bunt and takes the fastball inside. Tony playing the percentages here. The infield is pulled up. Fifth, at least at the moment, has been ordered to try to bunt Rudy to third. Now if the pitch goes to a strike or two, then he'll try to just hit the ball to the right side. Or if he gets one he really likes, he'll jump on it. But his job right now is to move the runner at the expense of himself. Nobody out. Law at second. Looks around to see where the infield is playing him. Now four steps off the rubber and Law is bluffed back to the bag. The side-arming right-hander and the veteran left-hander Andy Hassler are heating up in the Angel bullpen. I think the uh, sidewinder is Corbett. The Angels are dead last with just 20 saves credited to their bullpen this year. Fisk around the butt, takes a strike on the outside corner. The count evens at one and one. One ball and one strike to Carlton Fisk, and now we're going to have a meeting as Bob Boone, the catcher, brings LeBronix to the third baseman over, and they'll all talk with the pitcher, Ken Porsche, in front of the mound.
paid attendance here tonight, 41,878. 41,878, the seventh crowd of 40,000 or more. And for the year now, the White Sox, 1,910,000 plus. All right, the meeting is broken up. Watt second, nobody out. Force working out of the stretch. The look out there. Guy comes to the plate. Time is called. Touch back out. No pitch. Now that's kind of a questionable maneuver there, but they allowed him to get away from it. All right, here's the total sports attendance for the city of Chicago today. The Bears were 58,000 plus. The Cubs standing room only, 34,634. And the Sox with 41,878 here tonight. 134,500 plus attending the three major league sporting events, the two baseball games and the Bears football game today here in the city of Chicago. Some kind of day. Now the stretch by force, the pitch. Pudge is going to bunt, pops it, foul. Back out of play and the count is one and two. Now he'll be swinging away, trying to protect himself as well. Disc unable to get the bunt down. Now with two strikes, he'll be swinging away and hopefully he'll, he'll try to put the ball in play to the right side and that would do the same thing it would advance the runner. The infielder is pulled around a bit to the left. The outfield deep and just a shade around that way. Wall with a big lead off the bag at second. Here's the pitch. And this takes low, breaking ball, maybe a sick here and the count is even. Two balls, two strikes. The team success the White Sox have enjoyed this year and the tremendous year that Fisk has had since the 1st of June. He's got to be right up there when you start talking about MVP honors for the league. The stretch, here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a sinker down and away. Good pitch by Porsche. It appeared to be out of the strike zone and a bit low, but Pudge couldn't lay off, and that's a big strikeout for Kenny Porsche, his fourth of the game. One out. McNamara will make a quick trip to the mound from his first base dugout before Harold Baines steps in. So far tonight, Baines has been easy for the right-hander from Sacramento. Although Harold has an RBI, he drove in the first run of the game, scoring Rudy Law from third on a ground ball to second. He grounded out to Will Fong again in the third, and in the fifth, Will Fong converted the third ground ball off Baines, bat into a quick 4-3 inning-killing double play, but Rudy Law at third, and Fisk at first and one out. So Baines 0 for 3 with an RBI stepping in there now with Law at second and one out, bottom of the eighth, a 3-3 tie. Baines with 16 game-winning hits, in a tie for second behind the Yankees' Davey Winfield. He got the game-winner here last night with a home run with two out in the bottom of the 12th. Just made it into the lower deck. to the belt. Here's the pitch to Baines. Swung on. Bouncer to the right side again. A two-hopper to Wilfong. The runner, Law, moves the third. And the throw got away from Carroll. It goes into the dugout. And the White Sox score the run. That's unbelievable. An easy three-hopper to Wilfong. He delivered a soft throw to Carroll and Rodney didn't catch it. And it went into the dugout. The run scores. It's unearned all the way and Baines goes to second. Rudy Law scored three of the four runs tonight. There's always a way when you're going well, you'll win somehow. You talk about a routine play. Will Fong bumps a couple times, just tosses the first, and Carew's glove went down about well, below his knees. Looked like he deflected off his glove. How in the world Carew missed that, we'll never know until he tells us. That's got to be an error on Rodney. Second error on the Angels. And Lozinski fouls one off on the first pitch. Greg has extended his inning string to five. He drove in a run with a single in the third. He's tapped to the mound twice, so he's one for three. Boy, Carew dropped the easiest throw in the world. The stretch and the pitch to Lozinski inside a ball. Belt high and the count is one and one. Well, 
That looked like shades of the All-Star game here, although there's no sun now. Only the fifth air of the year for Carew. Lazinski hits a high, deep fly to left field. Way, way back. It is caught right up against the fence. Tagging and going to third is Bain. A tremendous drive off the bat of Lazinski. How the ball stayed in the ball yard, I'll never know. But Pettis caught it with his back up against the wall, just to the left of the 401 sign in deep left center field. Two out. That ball had to travel 401. He hit it a mile in the air. And right up against the wall was Pettis to catch it. And I mean, he was flattened up against that screen down there. He could not have gone another step farther. Two out. That would have been a nice cushion, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Here's Greg Walker. Baines at third with two out. Walker 0 for 3. Called out on a check swing third strike in the second. Flying to left in the third and bounced out to Lebronich at third base. The last time up in the sixth. Well, the drop throw at first by Carew. Right now, the difference in this ball game. Rudy Law has three of the five hits and has scored three of the four White Sox runs. Here's Walker trying to get an insurance run in. Baines at third with two out. Force will work out of the windup. Bouncer to the right side, little dribbler to Wilfong. Another throw to Carew. This time he hangs on to it and the inning is over. But the White Sox score the lead run on a leadoff double by Law and an error. By Carew at first, we go to the ninth, point three outs away from his 20th win, leading the Angels four to three. of master electrician products including outlets, adapters, switches, tape, and more, all value priced exclusively at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. And say that Pat Summerall sent you. Well, we go to the ninth inning. Lamar Hoyt, three outs away from victory number 20. And he'll look at Naren, Boone, and Wilfong. Naren knocked in two runs with a single to left field in the fourth inning in the last time up. Sent Rudy Law deep into the right center field corner up against the fence to haul in his drive. Point misses low and away, ball one. Dodger got a million, 910,000 on the year. Hoyt drives the back, the out, uh, back door of the outside edge and misses wide with a curve, and it's ball two. The four-day series here drew 155,631. Now, that's the second biggest attendance-wise series here this year. They set the club record, the all-time club record for a four-game, four-day series with the Yankees back in July. And this one didn't miss it too far, about eight or 9,000. Two balls to strike. The left-handed hitting catcher D.H. tonight, Jerry Naren. High leg kick delivery. Swung on. Looper down the left field side. It's going to bend foul. Land on the warning track and then jump into the lower seat down there beyond the Sox dugout about halfway down the line and the count is two and two. Four to three, the Sox lead here in the ninth thanks to a drop throw at first by the normally sure-handed Rod Carew. Boyd 
Peering in to get the sign. Near and waiting. Here's the wind up of the big right hander. 2 2 pitch swung on. Line to right field. Baines going back. He is there. Leaps up and makes the catch in front of the warning track. That ball just kept sailing and kept driving deeper and deeper. Baines kind of nonchalant it a little bit. Then had a tippy toe up and makes the two hand over the head grab just before he got to the warning track. That ball was hit pretty hard. This broadcast is being brought to you under right credit by the Chicago White Sox only for the entertainment of our audience. Any retransmission of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the White Sox is prohibited. One gone in the ninth. Here's Boone. He doubled and scored in the second. Hit into a double play and walked. So he is one for two. Right into the line appears the pitch. Swung on high. Deep drive to left field. Going back is Kennel. He's at the wall. And it is gone. We got a tie score in the ninth. It's Bob Boone. Then a hoist fastball about eight rows up in the lower deck and left with one out of the ninth, and the score suddenly is tied at four. For Boone, his eighth home run and his 48th run batted in. Boy, you call that picking up a fellow mate? One veteran Boone helping out another veteran Carew, and that's going to make the night a lot shorter and the flight back to Southern California a lot easier for Rod Carew, but for the Sox fans, that's a disappointment here in the ninth as Hoyt looked like he was going to wrap it up here in the ninth. Now here's Will Fong. He singled in a run in the second. He's popped to right and struck out. Fastball at the knees for a call strike. That is the 21st home run hit off Lamar Hoyt this year. He leads the club in that category. There is a line drive right field base hit. Will Fong's second hit. Baines over to cut it off and... Will Fong will hold it first, and it could be that Hoyt is just about out of juice here because Naren really lined the ball deep to right for the first out. And then Boone, normally not a home run hitter, deposits one into the lower deck and left, and now Will Fong with a clean single to right. And here comes Tony La Russa, literally trotting to the mound to check on his ace right-hander. I would think at this point, he will probably acquiesce to Lamar's wishes. If Lamar wants to finish the ninth, I'm sure Tony's going to let him try to gut it out here. Well, as we mentioned at the outset, in his last 63 starts going back, certainly in the last year, Lamar with 60 decisions, so he's not one to head for the locker room in a shower with a tie game in the ninth inning. And the crowd very happy as Tony La Russa goes back and Lamar gets ready to pitch again. So the Angels have the lead man on now with one out, and young Dick Schofield scheduled to step in. That's 10 hits off Hoyt tonight. The Angels have led in the hit parade all night. They've out hit the White Sox 10 to 5, but we're tied at 4 here in the top of the ninth with one on, one out, and one in. Schofield lined hard to right, bounced to third, and hit into a fourth play, so he's 0 for 3. Go to first, Squires holding the runner. Squires came in defensively in place of Greg Walker here in the top of the ninth. The pitch, strike call to fastball just under the letters inside corner to young Schofield. 0-1 oh, the count. Boyd just leans in a bit to get the sign from Fisk, the right-hander working out of the stretch, the pitch. Strike call a slider down and out on the outside edge, knee high. Boy, he's shown this youngster from Springfield, two big league pitches there. Up and in and down and away, both for strikes. Lamar is ready, here's the delivery. Ground ball, hit to the second soccer Fletcher. Shovels to Gazinski to first, a double play. 4-6-3, the third turn for the Sox in field tonight. Number 136 on the air. Let's go get him as we go to the bottom of the night. All tied at 4-4. My neighbor Sam is impressed by titles. When he found out, Miss New Jersey drives the Honda Accord four-door sedan, same as mine. He couldn't wait to tell me. But I wasn't surprised. After all, I said, Miss New Jersey and the Honda Accord have a lot in common. They're both beautiful and highly regarded by the competition. Yes, but Miss New Jersey, a reigning beauty queen with the same car as you. So what I said, a lot of beautiful people drive Honda Accords. It's the best-selling front-wheel drive four-door sedan in Alabama, Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Oregon, Virginia, and Washington. No New Jersey, I said. Nope. New Jersey was a myth.
Now to present the Star Power High Octane Award, Bob Hope. Hi, tonight's awards are for the highest octanes you can get. Envelope, please. And the winners are Texaco Unleaded with ethanol at 89 octanes, New Super Regular with ethanol at 91, and Premium Unleaded with ethanol at 92. up with the right hand here. Here's the pitch. Kittle swings and misses on a sinker down and away. That's five strikeouts for course. And Kittle's gone down twice tonight. 135 times on the year. Now that seems like a, a lot of strikeouts, and it is. Until you realize that Reggie Jackson in less than 400 at bats has fanned 130 times by comparison. like a lot of strikeouts, and it is, until you realize that Reggie Jackson did less than 400 at bats and 130 times by comparison. That's why it's going to be pulled here, and Jerry Hairston, pinch hitter supreme, is going to bat for him. Hairston, 288, is a pinch hitter. Leads the American League in pinch hits and also pinch hitting appearances. 15 out of 52, one homer, nine RBIs. Coming off the bench cold on the year. Hairston with the only 300-plus batting average in the ball club. Jerry at 311. Five home runs, 22 RBIs. Listed as a switch hitter, he has had only 11 official bat as a right-handed hitter this year. He'll bat for Vance Law. Who at this point being lifted going over two puts a walk we'll see his eight game hitting streak in one out nobody on bottom of the ninth four four tie Harrison takes a couple of more practice right hander force into the plate with the end of the bat. Now he's set. Here's the windup by Porsche in the delivery. Swung on, fly ball. It's at high and deep to right field. It's back on the warning track, but there to make the catch is set. It's right in front of bullpen number two. That ball was in about 370 feet from home plate. Well, Pettis has had a busy night himself out there in center field. He's been a couple of fine catches, although that one was more or less routine. Two out. And Hairston pulled it. They'd be setting off the scoreboard right about now. Here's Scott Fletcher open three. Fly ball to center. Call third strike. And a pop up to Will Fogg his last time up. The wind up of the right hander force. Here's the pitch. Fastball just a bit outside. Ball one. Sox, the Angels may be about ready to go into extra innings for the second straight time. There's a drive to center field. Yeah. The Angels, yeah. well, the White Sox, won at 12 last night in their 7-3 in extra inning ball games. The Angels, 8-10 in extra innings, and will go to the test all tied at 4. <laughs> Wilson, this is Joe McConnell. We go to the 10th inning of Park and those 41,000 plus who hope they might get a glimpse of Reggie. Looking right at their wish, Reggie Jackson. Mired in the worst club, having the worst year of his career, hitting just 198. One for his last 42. He's not homered since the 31st of July off Keith Atherton of the Oakland A's out at Anaheim. Jackson not playing much at all anymore here with one year to go on that big contract. will back for... Braddock leading off the 10th inning against Hoyt. This is the third time the big right-handers tried to go more than nine this year. The first two times did not have a very good result. We're all tied at four going to the 10th. Reggie batting for Lebrettich. Fastball a bit high, ball one. Reggie with his 14 home runs this year. He has a career total of 478. 14th on the all-time home run list. He needs 22 to get to 500. 
The pitch on the way. Swung on, line drive, left field. Kittle coming on, makes the cut. Leonard High. Reggie scalded it pretty good to the opposite field. One out. The longest inning Sox pitcher has gone this year was Bannister, who completed 10 full innings in that 16-inning loss out at Oakland. He had no decision in the game. A lot, only one run unearned that night. Sox eventually lost the game 2-1 to in 16 innings. Here's Gary Pettis, the leadoff man. He's one for four tonight, although he's also reached on an error. He runs up as if the bunt takes the fastball low, ball one. Bounce to second, reached on Fletcher's there in the third, singled and stole his first major league base in the fifth, and tapped out to the shortstop Dubinsky the last time up in the eighth. Pitch on the way. Strike on the outside corner of that slider nicking the outside edge. Last second break there. One ball and one strike. Hoyt has the sign. The right hand delivers. Fastball swung on and missed. It was low and tennis went after it. Swung over the top. One and two. Looking ahead in the bottom of the tenth, the Sox will send up Dubinsky, Rudy Law, and Carlton Fifth. The whole story for the White Sox tonight was to get Rudy on base leading off an inning. One-two pitch on the way. A bouncer over Hoyt's head out. And in the center field as it took a second high bounce off that hard infield dirt and skipped over Fletcher's reach as he tried to backhand the ball. So Pettis has his second hit of the game and he's a base stealing threat to Hoyt. And the Sox will have to be on guard here. Hit number 11 off Lamar Hoyt. A big high bounder over the mound and out over Fletcher's head in the center field. Rod Carew with a chance to redeem himself with his drop throw at first base that enabled the White Sox to score an unearned run and take the lead into the ninth against Port. White turns, goes over to first base. Carew single to left his last time up. He's one for four in this one and three for 12 in the four-game set. One on, one out, top of the 10th inning. Point to the belt, here's the pitch to Carew. And a smash, one hopper to Rodriguez, throws the second for one, the first, another, around the horn, double play. Five, four, three, this one started by Rodriguez, who came in to replace Van Claw. And that is the fourth double play in the ball game for the White Sox, their 137th of the year. No runs, one in, nobody left. In the old run will win it as we go to the bottom of the 10th, still tied at four. <laughs> We go to the bottom of the 10th inning. And again, any old run, no matter how they get it, will be enough for Lamar Hoyt and the White Sox. Lamar has pitched 10 complete innings tonight in quest of that 20th victory. Still has a chance for it. Rick Adams now comes in to play third base. In place of LeBrannett, who is lifted for the pinch hitter, Reggie Jackson, in the top of the 10th. And Julio Cruz now is going to pitch it for the Dibbers. Julio Swift getting second baseman, 240 on the year. Home run, 45 RBIs, to 51 for three with a run scored tonight. He single and scored in the third inning. Not gambling that if Cruz can get on, they can move him around to where they can score him. Swings, and he fouls this one into the dirt behind the plate. So Julio Cruz batting for Dubinsky in his customary number nine spot. Leading off the bottom of the tenth against Kenny Ford. There's a smash up the middle of base hit for two. Julio Cruz and a pitch single. Smash up the middle on the ground just to the left of the second base flag and the winning run is on with nobody out. Oh, another move that appears to be bordering on genius. And it's not that it's any smarter than any other move you might make. It's just that when your club is going good, these guys always seem to deliver just at the right time. Such as Mark Hill last night with two out and the tying runs in scoring position. You would never, ever think of pitch hitting Mark Hill under those circumstances. He came in and crushed the double into the left center field corner to send the game into the extra innings where the White Sox won it. Well, Cruz comes through with a pitch hit tonight. And he represents the winning run at first with nobody out here in the bottom of the 10th inning. It's only the sixth hit off Ken Ford. Well, Cruz now will be looking to steal his 50th base of the year. He is 16 out of 20 since he joined the White Sox. It's been a couple of weeks since he even tried to steal one. He is 49 out of 59 on the year. And here's Rudy. 
He walked, stole a base, scored a run in the first. Double scored a run in the third. Single stole a base, went to third on the overthrow, but was left stranded in the fifth. Let off the eighth with a double and scored a run. So he is three for three with three runs scored and two stolen bases. And he takes a strike at the knee. Cruz at first. Nobody out. Bottom of the tenth. Four-four tie. Sox trying to win it here for Lamar Hoyt and present him with his 20th victory of the year. Ricky Adams in very shallow at third on the grass. There's the pitch. Outside the ball. Fourth missing with a fastball. It's one and one to Rudy Law. His average now is 291 with three more hits tonight. He now has nine hits and 40 at bats on the year against California. He has struggled all year against them until this particular ball game. Forecaster side, here's a pitch, Rudy swings, bounces to the right side, Wilfong will have to go to first, and Cruz got by him, and Rudy is out for the first time, but he does advance the runner. Well, that was close to being a double play, Cruz just barely got by Wilfong as he charged in and took that little free hopper on the front part of the skin force of the diamond. Cruz is second with one out, and Carlton Fisk has one last chance to extend that 14-game hitting streak. He's 0 for 3 with an RBI tonight. He drove in a run with a ground ball that's short in the third. He walked in the fifth. It's the longest hitting streak by any Sox player this year. Carlton had the previous long effort at 12, but he's bettered it by 2 this time around. He hit the ball hard first two times up. One a deep drive to left center, and then the ground ball is short. Also, it's very hard. Stretched by four. Here's the pitch. Punch swings and misses. Good figure. He swung over the top. Cruz at second. Takes the short lead. Fourth is standing upright on the hill. Rear foot on the pitching rubber. Has the sign. Goes to the stretch. Here's the pitch to fifth. And it just missed inside. Didn't miss by much. The ball and a strike. Well, coming up a week from tomorrow night, Monday night, September 19th, the last family bargain night here at Comiskey Park this year. Come on out and see the Sox and the Twins. All tickets half right. That's Monday night, September 19th, the final family bargain night of the year. Here's the pitch. Try Cantonese. One ball, two strikes. a four-hour, hour and 33-minute rain delay, 12-inning ball game last night. Extra innings tonight. The only thing I haven't had was a overtime football game today. Cruz is second, one out. Horse to the belt, looks out there to pitch to Carlton, swinging a miss. He struck him out of that slider down in the way, and Fisk is all for four tonight. Horse fanned him twice, and that's five strikeouts for Kenny. Two gone, that'll leave it up to Bain. Who reached when Carew dropped it easy throw at first base, allowing the lead run at the time to score in the eighth. Baines is 0 for 4, and he hits the ball on the ground to second base four straight times. McNamara comes out to talk to his battery of Boone and Ford. It gives us a chance to remind everybody about the next home stand starting on Thursday night. It will be the Mariners for four, then the Minnesota Twins in for three. And a week from tomorrow night, Monday the 19th, the Twins will be here for the last family bargain night. And on that night, all $7, $5, $4, and $3 tickets will be half price. They're all available at Smithy Park or by calling Ticketmaster at 559-1212. You can use the charge card. That's the last family bargain night, Monday the 19th. Well, can Harold do it two nights in a row in extra inning? He broke up the extra inning affair with a two-out homer in the 12th last night. Now he stands in with two outside score. Cruz is second here in the bottom of the tenth. The pitch on the way. And the ball outside. Didn't miss by much. Four Smith with that slider just outside the strike zone about to high. Ball on the count. Outfield deep and straight away. The stretch. Here's the pitch. Low ball two. Bain should work his way on. Greg Lezinski on deck then will become the man of the minute. Hoyt and Forrest have both gone all the way tonight. It's been a dandy pitcher's battle. The 2-0 pitch to Bain. 
Swung on, foul back upstairs into the luxury box right under the roof on the third base side, upper deck behind the plate in the count of two and one. The point wins tonight will be his ninth win in a row would give him an 11 and 2 record since the all-star break and the big three would be 31 and 5 since the 4th of July. Here's the pitch. Hey, he puts it to right field, a base hit, high bounce, it goes to run, the throw to the plate is saved and the White Sox win! The White Sox win! Julio Cruz ran halfway to the dugout, rounding third. He came in from the foul side. Who thought he had the plate blocked off and Cruz got it with a hand back door and the White Sox win it for the second straight night in a critics on main game winning hit. And Lamar Hoyt becomes the first 20 game winner in the Major League this year and the first in the American League since 1980. A seven game homestand sweep for the streaking Chicago White Sox. One run, two hits, one left in the tenth. The Sox win it five to four for the sweep. We'll be back with all of the post-game highlights and festivities here. A big fireworks display coming up. But in the bottom of the 10th inning, Harold Bain drives in his 17th game-winning RBI of the year. Lamar Hoyt is 20-game winner. The Sox win 5-4-10. and 10. Stay tuned for the post-game coverage of tonight's game on the Chicago White Sox Radio Network. Chicago and Cicero get the best steel belted radial tire BF Goodrich makes at its lowest price ever. The XLMHC is the all-season tire that provides excellent traction in both winter and summer on wet or dry roads. A polyester core body and two bolt steel belts give you a smooth, quiet ride and long-lasting performance. The XLMHC radial delivers outstanding handling and fuel saving. Get the BF Goodrich XLMHC radial tire now through September 30th at its lowest price ever. Get it at all five central tire locations and see how BFD's best just got better. Central Tire with five BF Goodrich locations including Roosevelt, in Austin and Cicero and 728 South Clinton in downtown Chicago. Why did Cleopatra become Queen of the Nile? Baby, I did it for the money. Why did Sherlock Holmes solve crime? I must confess, I did it for the money. Why did the Bride of Frankenstein marry Frankenstein? I did it for the money. You could win a million dollars or up to a hundred thousand dollars instantly in the Illinois State Lottery Fortune Instant Game. So play it for the same reason Napoleon became emperor. Lukash! <laughs> right now at Blue Star, you can get performance that pays with B. Catafree. And right now is the perfect time for Pete to protect your car from sun or boil over. And prepare yourself for the winter ahead. Because Pete Catafreeze will rebate you $2 for two gallons. Pete has been tested by the pros to guarantee your cars get up and go. Plus, Blue Star has discounted the famous Castro motor oil. 10W40 or 20W50 for only 89 cents a quart. So get the performance of your car while you cash in and discount that Blue Star. Blue Star Seven blue stars near you by 2385 Milwaukee and Fullerton at 2001 South State Street. The game has been brought to you by the following participating sponsors. Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob, some things speak for themselves. The Bell System Yellow Page, the small investment that keeps your big investment paying off. The Ford Simple Tire Location, your complete discount tire center. The Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Chicago. Bottle is the Coke, Cap, Sprite, Mellow Yellow, and New Diet Coke. The Butte White Sox Clubbers. The official hot dog of the Chicago White Sox. General Finance. For a consumer or home equity loan, there's the General Finance office near you. Honda and your Chicago Land and Northern Indiana Honda dealers. The Illinois State Lottery. Have a ball. Play the lottery. Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. True Value Hardware Store. More than just a name, it's their way of doing business. Zenith, the smart set, where the quality goes in before the name goes on, and the Chicago area Apple computer dealers.
Another breathless, dramatic finish here at Comiskey Park. Tonight, before almost 42,000, the White Sox reduced their magic number to four. They win for the seventh straight time. That's right, in a week, seven games at home for the homestand. They win all seven, and they've won 13 in a row at home. Welcome back to the South Side, Ken Any. Sox 5-4 over the Angels. I'm Ken Wilson along with Joe McConnell. Well, the Angels have got to be heading west and shaking their heads. They find themselves going home after a road trip where they've gone one and six. They're going to go home with a four-game losing streak, and they find themselves looking up at the White Sox some 20 games distance. It's hard to imagine, but oh so true here on Sunday night, September the 11th. The dramatic finish coming in the 10th with two outs. Julio Cruz leading off with a single. And moved to second on a ground out and scores from second on Harold Baines' line drive single to right field. He just keeps the tag at the plate as Mike Brown rifled a strong throw to Bob Boone and played up on a rocky row, giving the safe signal and the Sox jubilant again as they win for the 84 side. It's great to have with us veteran catcher Kyle Fitzpatrick, who at age 35 might be having his best season ever. But it was an exciting win again. I'm just wondering, how do you rate this season personally? I know you're more interested in the club, but is this the best year in your career? Well, that's hard to say, but I would say where our club is and the contributions that the uh, team members have made, this is probably the most exciting year that I've spent. You had a 14-game hitting streak coming in. Now, probably somebody will write, well, his 14-game hitting streak ended. But early in the game... You had a fly ball that moved a runner to third. That was key when a run was scored later. You also had a ground ball in the third that drove in a run. So you may not have had a hit, but certainly it was a productive night offensively. Well, it's, it's nice to look back and, and see that I contributed to some of the runs that were scored. But uh, my last few times up, I would like to have done something with the ball other than strike out. Uh, I was supposed to bunch the ball one time up and ended up striking out. And then the last time up, uh, he just made some good pitches on me and struck me out again. But, you know, Harold came through like he has so many times. And, and uh, old Deuce was safe at the plate. And Ken Ford fit very well. And that was obvious. Uh, he was he was tough and strong at the finish. Tell us about the man who becomes Major League Baseball's first 20-game winner and certainly puts himself in the driver's seat for a Cy Young Award, Lamar Hoy. How about his overall performance? Well, his overall performance probably wasn't uh, since his choice. He gave up a bunch of hits, but he got tough when he had to get tough. Uh, he made a couple of bad pitches. Uh, one to throw in there to lead off the ninth inning to try to score. I know he can kick himself for that, but uh, uh, overall, he's the best batter there is. Probably the best there ever was, too. And, uh, if you want to win a game, you want to send Lamar out there. Well, Kyle Pinsett, truly a winner himself, is our guest. He was the battery mate of 20-game winner Lamar Hoyt tonight. We'll have some final questions for Carlton right after this. Show that we find color photography with four new 35-millimeter color print film. One film is so sharp it can pick up every petal on a rose bush. Another so versatile it can capture a tree house in fancy light. A high-speed film that can catch all the color of a trapeze artist. Even a film so sensitive it can see the stained glass window by available light. The color VR 100, 200, 400, and 1,000 films from Kodak. If you're a Sox fan, you've got plenty to care about these days. There's the winning spirit that's taking the Sox to the playoffs and the winning taste of the Buick White Sox Fluffers. The Buick White Sox Fluffers are the official hot dog of the Chicago White Sox. The same one served at Jimmy's Park. They're big and a bun, gigantic on taste, with a mild, meaty flavor Sox fans can't get enough of. So pick up some fluffers before the next Sox game. That way you'll have two things to cheer about. Another White Sox win and the winning case of the few White Sox fluffers. The Sox win it tonight in 10 by a score of 5-4 over the Angels. Carlton, you look at things now and you see another victory. Things continue to roll on and there have been a lot of stories recently written about the White Sox and there are going to be more especially nationally in the next few weeks before the end of the season and I'm sure even more in October but everyone talking about how nice the veterans are in this club to one the newcomers and two the real young players that there's a very genial attitude among everyone here and that uh, is pointed out is somewhat exceptional can you give the fans some insight into that well my personal opinion is that uh, we've got 25 guys here and we're all striving for the same thing. And that is to win as many games as possible, ultimately to, to win the World Series. And, of course, before that, the divisional and the playoffs. But there's no use creating any friction or personality clashes 
within the ball club when everybody's going to be trying to do their best to win ball games. I know it was different when I came up, and both can tell you the same thing, but uh, I don't feel as though it has to be that way, where a veteran that's been around 10 or 12 years doesn't talk to or doesn't treat the, the rookie like a fellow, you know, a fellow person or fellow teammate. That uh, we're all here to try to do the same thing, and that is to, to do as many things right to win as many ball games as we can. I'm not sure, but why this occurs. Maybe it is because of the press, but it seems as though over the years people want to look to one individual and say, that guy is the leader of this club. Everybody looks to so-and-so. You've heard that often, I know, and on different clubs you probably had a player that you had to look to in key situations, usually it's the oldest player or the biggest star. Is there such a, a thing on this White Sox club, a one player that everyone looks to for leadership? Well, we do have a few older players. But uh, you know, a few players that have been in this type of situation, and Gary Cushman, and Gustav, and myself, and Greg Lazinski. But we don't land and raid in the clubhouse or the dugout or, or the like. Uh, maybe the example that we set by just going about our business, uh, doing the job and treating every day as if it was the, the same as yesterday, and trying to treat tomorrow the same as today. And uh, you know, there's an old saying in this game: what you did yesterday doesn't mean anything today. So. As a result, that's the way the older players approach it. Some of the younger players might be thinking about an 0 for 4 yesterday or a couple of errors yesterday, and they may distract them for what they have to do today. So when you go out and put yesterday behind you and deal with the present and the game at hand, then there may be something there for the younger ball players to look to. Well, tomorrow it will be fun to talk about yesterday because there will be seven straight yesterdays of wins and a very well-deserved day off. Enjoy it tomorrow, and congratulations on the win tonight. All right, it was a great one. Thank you very much. Carlton Fish, the superb veteran catcher of the White Sox, fully a leader on this ball club that now is magic number four away from a Western Division title. All of our guests receive a TE rechargeable battery pack from True Value Hardware Stores and Hulk Center. We'll take a look at the baseball scoreboard and give you some highlights of this wonderful evening of another White Sox victory in 10 here at Comiskey Park. And we'll do that when we return after this. USA Today introduces sports in an entirely different way.